It's football season in Texas, and everyone loves a cold or dub beverage. Don't be the one that gets arrested for a DWI, or even worse, cause an accident due to irresponsible drinking. If you consume alcoholic beverages, be a responsible drinker and have a designated driver. It could save not only your life, but someone else's as well. It's simple. Drink and drive and go to jail. Don't drink and drive. This message has been brought to you by Athens and Turner Record Companies. Turner Records and Malakoff and Athens Record of Athens wish the Malakoff Tigers and Lady Tigers a successful sports year. Hey, it's that time of the year where you don't want those special moments to be forgotten about. Wesley Jones, owner of Thunderbridge Photography, can bring those magical moments to life and you can have a lifetime of memories frozen in time. Wesley specializes in detailed, artistic, and dramatic portraiture such as sports photography, singer portraits, and glamour shots. With Thunderbridge Photography, Wesley works with his clients to come up with a creative and original concept that translates into one-of-a-kind images. Wesley is currently booking singers for the 20. 20 year. Wesley is just a phone call away and can be reached at 903-368-1668 or email Wesley at wesleyjpaint at gmail.com. Thunderbridge Photography can also be found on Facebook or the internet at www.thunderbridgephotography.com. Wesley Jones at Thunderbridge Photography is the official photographer for the Malakoff Tiger Sports Network. Go Tigers! The Malakoff Tigers Sports Network would like to thank Brookshire's and Malakoff for the catering of our press box tonight. Brookshire's will cater all home games this year, and we are proud of our hometown grocery store for the continuous support of Malakoff ISD Athletics. Thank you, Brookshire's, for being a sponsor of Malakoff Tigers Sports Network. You're going to love our food. This is Bubba Jean inviting you to our new location serving the best food in East Texas. My son and I have our seafood buffet every Friday and Saturday night or Saturday evening. We also open at 7 o'clock in the morning for breakfast just to serve you. Our lunches will start at $8.95, including different menus every day. Our hand-cut steaks include sirloin, ribeyes, T-bones, and we prepare them for you daily. I'm telling you right now, you're going to love our food. Bubba's Place is located at the Double D Steakhouse Highway 31 West west in Kearns, Texas. Woo Let's face it, we live in a fast-paced world with little time to get many things done that in a perfect world we could do with relative ease ourselves. With David Kennedy's red carpet treatment, let David do things that you don't have time to do or just don't want to tackle yourself. David has his three-room carpet cleaning special for just $125. That's what I'd pay the chiropractor after doing that. Save money, time, and your back. Let the carpet pro get her done for you. Did we mention that David won best carpet cleaning business on Cedar Creek Lake in 2017 and 2019? Well, he just did. Kennedy's Red Carpet Treatment specializes in 24-hour water extraction and rapid structure dry out, tile, grout, VCT tile, area rugs, upholstery, carpet cleaning, air duct cleaning, and odor elimination. The Malakoff Tigers Sports Network endorses David's work. The phone number that you can reach David at is 903-802-0218. You can also send David an email at kennedysredcarpet at gmail.com. David is also on Facebook. Facebook. Just give him a shout for the best of the best service. David would like to wish his daughter Alec and son Carter a great year this year at Malakoff Middle School. Alec is a 7th grade MMS cheerleader and Carter is on the 8th grade football team. We would like to thank David for his support of the Malakoff Tigers Sports Network. Go Tigers! This portion of tonight's Malakoff Tiger football game is being brought to you in part by CC's Unisex Hair Shop. CC's Unisex Hair Shop is located at 604 West Corsicana Street in Athens, Texas. The phone number you can reach Cynthia or Cecil at CC's is 903-477-1553 or 903-675-2688. CC's takes walk-ins and appointments. CC's, we're looking good, is understood. This portion of tonight's Malakoff Tiger football coverage is being brought to you in part by Coach Pontoons. Coach Pontoons manufactures standard and custom pontoon barges equipped with Honda outboard motors. The website for Coach Pontoons is www.coachpontoons.com. And they can be found on Facebook by searching Coach Pontoons. Hey, Kenny, you wouldn't believe how much faster my internet is now since you put that tower up for me and we got the internet dish up at the top. Oh, yeah, having your antenna higher makes all the difference. Does that also work with, like, cell phone boosters and TV antennas? Because out here in the sticks, a lot of us are, like, down in a low place. Oh, yeah, having a tower in a rural area makes all the difference, Aaron. Not only is the tower good for internet, it's also good for cell phone booster, TV antenna, or even amateur radio. Hey, Kenny, why don't you tell the people a little bit about your business? Oh, certainly, Aaron, I'd be glad to. 
to. You know, East Texas Towers is one of the nation's leading internet tower sales and installation companies. For nearly 10 years, our family owned and operated business has been providing residential and commercial customers with the highest quality customer service and support in the industry. You can call me at 972-900-5108 or check us out on the web at www.easttexastowers.com. Now let's get that TV antenna up so you can start watching TV. Sounds good. East Texas Towers proudly supports the Malakoff Tiger Sports Network and wishes good luck to the Malakoff Tigers this season. Established in 1966, Hearn Surveying Associates LLC is a family-owned and operated professional land surveying firm located in Athens, Texas. Mark Book Farrell is carrying on the family tradition as the owner of Hearn Surveying. HSA is licensed, experienced, and equipped to meet a plethora of surveying needs. Typical projects include title surveys, topography surveys, commercial construction projects, energy-related jobs, land development, and boundary locations. Most importantly, Hearn Surveying stands ready to respond to your surveying needs in the changing land of the real estate market. For all of your surveying needs, call Hearn Surveying and Associates LLC at 903-675-2858. That's 903-675-2858. Or visit their office located at 108 West Tyler Street in Athens, Texas. Hearn Surveying Associates wishes the Malakoff Tigers good luck this season. And good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the first broadcast for the Malakoff Tigers Sports Network. And I'm joined today in the booth uh, with or by Mr. Uh, Stephen Ferris. And uh, Mr. Aaron Austin is working the control boards for us and controlling the commercials. And we have my Aaron son. Scott. I'm sorry, Aaron Scott. <laughs> a, a little bit of a, a preseason nerves are trying to get worked out, my friend. And uh, uh, Jonathan Snowden is uh, on the camera tonight. So we have a camera this year. And uh, what's neat about this whole broadcast is that you will be able to see all games that we broadcast uh, with the varsity football games two hours after the conclusion of the varsity football game and it could take up to 24 hours we're told uh, to get it online uh, you will be able to see that game in its entirety uh, all Thursday night uh, middle school games and JV games will be live and uh, there will be no delay or anything with those games at all we're excited to be here we want to thank all of our sponsors and uh, it's the best time of the year. Some say uh, Christmas is the best time of the year, but football time is the best time of the year for me. And uh, oh, definitely. we, we uh, are excited to be here on another year. Uh, we're missing our good friend, the Hall of Famer, uh, the Oh My Man, Mr. Marcus Dow. He is uh, on hiatus today and this weekend. He's uh, doing his family reunion up in Fort Worth, Texas. So uh, shout out to Marcus and uh, safe travels, my friend. And uh, we hope you have a great time with your family. And Marcus will be back uh, with Stephen and uh, Austin and myself, uh, excuse me, Aaron and myself. <laughs> I'll get it right in a minute. Uh, for the first game of the season against the uh, Teague Lions, that game will be in Teague, Texas. And, uh, boy, that'll be a game to uh, see right there after Malakoff uh, put it to Teague last year by a score 60-30 to 30 in that first game of the season. And uh, Teague will be out for a little revenge, so to speak, in that first week. And uh, we'll get to that a little bit later in the season. But uh, we've got a little uh, JV and uh, high school varsity action here today. Uh, the many yellow yellow jackets have traveled from East Texas to uh, be here today to scrimmage the Malakoff Tigers. And this is our first time. Uh, this season that we're getting a good look at the Malakoff Tigers and uh, graduated quite a few people this year, but uh, the Tigers just seem to reload every year under Coach Jamie Driscoll's tutelage. And uh, I tell you what, uh, I'm excited to see what's going to happen this year for the Tigers, uh, for Malakoff, Stephen, and Aaron. Uh, Keevy Rose will be in the backfield starting off at tailback for the Tigers. Tigers will run a spread offense. And, uh, of course, you got one of the, the best uh, quarterbacks in the state of Texas uh, for the Malakoff Tigers uh, calling the plays this year once again in Darion Peace. Uh, Peace had a uh, surgical-like season last year, if you will, as he operated on just about every defense he played against uh, last year in uh, helping the Malakoff Tigers to get to their first-ever state championship playoff appearance. And uh, he is poised and ready to be back. And I, 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 it looks like he's gained about 10 or 15 pounds of muscle. Looks a little bit different than he did last year. Of course, he's a junior this year. He's not sophomore status anymore. He stepped up in, in, in a junior. So uh, we're anxious to see what he's going to do and, and lead this Tiger team and 
They've got a plethora of running backs uh, at their disposal this year. Uh, the questions for the Tigers, I guess, will be on the offensive line and uh, the defensive line as well. But uh, no need to worry. That JV team, some of those guys will fill up uh, pretty quick into this role and step up and, and be just fine, I, I'm sure. As we look down the field, Malakoff's and all white. White uh, has a tendency to, to make you look kind of big, I guess. But uh, no worry here. The Tigers, uh, just they just reload every year, Stephen. They, they do look pretty big out there uh, in the white uniform, especially that uh, offensive line there. Uh, that's got some good size there, and I'm sure that's going to uh, translate into some uh, big gains by those running backs uh, throughout the season. Yeah, and that's what we're looking for right there. You know, get those hogs up front to move, and, and then you've got your uh, your running backs can follow in those uh, behind those big old hogs up front and uh, gain five or six yards a pop. And that's what Jamie Driscoll and company did last year. Keevy Rose came into his own about the third game of the season when Malenkoff played Grandview last year after an injury uh, to R.J. Carr. And Keevy Rose came into his own about that game. Rose had over 1,000 yards on the season and, and was the catalyst, the workhorse for the Tigers all last season, uh, if you will, guys. And uh, not to mention you had R.J. Carr, you know, had some health issues, didn't get really back till the, I believe, the second, third game of the playoffs and had some monstrous games. Uh, but Keithy Rose, make no mistake about it, will be the key back, the feature back this year for the Malakoff Tigers. And uh, you can also look for Dedrick Davis, another junior, who is a powerful running back in itself to step into the fold and uh, make some plays for the Tigers as well, Short, especially on short yardage plays. Uh, that is his role. The main thing for the Tigers this year, guys, is to keep them healthy. Uh, that Of course, any team wants to stay healthy during the course of the season, and it's imperative that Malakoff uh, stays healthy. And, boy, I tell you, uh, you know, just to stay healthy, they have got a monstrous schedule uh, coming up. Uh, that first game against Tig will, will be a, a, a slobber knocker because every time Tig and Malakoff gets together now, after they were in that old district together, uh, it, it, is a, it is a war. It's a battle. Oh, and, yeah, uh, De- definitely. Uh, that, those Freestone, Freestone County teams are, are usually pretty tough, especially the Fairfield, Teague, and, and Mahia area. You throw in Groves back a little bit. But, yes, uh, Coach Donnie Osborne has uh, had this uh, Teague team – uh, top notch just you know every season that he's been there the last uh, four or five years and uh, this year is probably not going to be any different I mean he'll be rebuilding a little bit uh, they did lose lose a few players but um, you know that happens when you have uh, good teams like that yeah and you know uh, it, it's just the process of it's kind of like junior college ball in a way you know that they're going to be here one year and gone the next perhaps or they're going to be here four years but maybe start two years because they start as a sophomore or senior but you know we're anxious to see what uh, this year entails because each year is a different year you can you can throw out the state championship appearance last year now that's in the past it's gone uh, it was a great run uh, while we had it, and um, but this year is a total different year, and I, I guarantee you some of those teams that Malakoff played against last year are going to be uh, out for blood against the Tigers this year because Malakoff uh, pretty much swept through their non-district uh, portion of the schedule with ease against those teams. They, they had a they had a little. I'd say if you had difficulty, the difficulty would have been with. Um, Longview Spring Hill, and uh, that was a very close game in itself where they played Longview Spring Hill. But, uh, you know, make no bones about it. You know, you've got Tig, you've got Mahia, uh, you've got Springville, uh, Spring Hill, excuse me, from Longview, and then you've got uh, a rematch of the state championship here at Tiger Stadium against Grandview, the Grandview Zebras, and boy, are they loaded. That's a team just basically all full of juniors. Uh, this comeback as sophomores that won that state championship against Malakoff last year. And uh, the talent there is just phenomenal. And as a matter of fact, Dave Campbell's uh, football magazine has rated uh, Grandview the number one team in the state of Texas for this year, along and Malakoff's trailing at number two. So one and two will, will lock heads. But uh, in order to keep that ranking, though, uh, you know, Malakoff's got to get by Tig. Uh, they've got to get by Mejia. And then they've got to get by Longview Spring Hill, which is, is no easy chore. You're, you're playing two 4A schools, 4A Division II schools, uh, you know, before you get to Grandview. And then Grandview's over there in Region 3. 
And, uh, you know, Region 3, we talk about regions, Malakoff and Region 2 in uh, District, uh, excuse me, in Division 1, 3A. And Division 2 is as tough as they come. But then you look at Division 3, it's even tougher over there. You've got Franklin, you've got Tig, uh, you've got Whitney, who's supposed to be better this year. Uh, you know, and, and then you've got uh, Grandview, who Grandview, until you beat them, is still the champ. You know, they're going to they're gonna be uh, – they're going to be back this year in, in pretty much strong as ever, and uh, I suspect that that Grandview Malakoff game will uh, will be a very very intense, hard hitting game. And I'm going to tell you folks right now, if you want to come watch that ball game, you better get to Tiger Stadium early because uh, cars may be parked all the way back to the elementary school in that game. Uh, there'll be a lot of outside media here covering that game as well. Uh, one of one of the top ten uh, games to watch in the state of Texas in Week Four by Dave Campbell's uh, football magazine. So, uh, and listen, uh, you know, in my op- honest opinion, Malakoff uh, right now down 2-0 to in the series two, uh, to Grandview, and Malakoff wants a little bit of revenge too, and, and what a good way to get that revenge back home this year. So looking forward to that as well, uh, that ball game. Uh, but, Stephen, you've got some stats there, and you've got some uh, things that you wrote that you want to share with us. Uh, go ahead, my friend. Yeah, I was just going to kind of break down a, a little bit on the uh, uh, what they call preseason before your district starts. Sure. Uh, you know, of course, uh, like you uh, hit on just a few minutes ago, uh, opening game is against Teague and in Teague. And uh, they play in uh, 3A Division One, uh, Region 3, District 9. Uh, Donnie Osborne's the co- still the coach over there, uh, like I said earlier. Uh, he's led them uh, deep in the playoffs uh, several years over the past uh, five or six seasons. Last year uh, they had a they had a chance they had a kind of a down year. They finished five and six overall, and uh, four and two in district. Uh, they uh, finished as a by district uh, finalist, losing to Troy, uh, 35 to 21. But uh, that's going to be that's going to be a really good contest. Uh, they're picked to finish third by Texas. Dave Campbell's Texas football in that district. Uh, next up after that is going to be the uh, Reigns Wildcats. They're coming from uh, District One or Division One, Region Two, District Five. They finished four and five last year and two and four uh, in district play. Uh, yeah, and I might add right there, just kind of jump in the District Five. That that district also holds Pottsboro, Bonham, Commerce, Howe. Lone Oak and Van Alstine as well. And uh, last year, the first round of the playoffs, Malakoff gets Pottsboro right out of the gate, and Malakoff hasn't been, uh, or Pottsboro hasn't been too kind to Malakoff in the playoffs as of uh, the past four or five years. So Malakoff uh, pretty much went in. They had a tough time with Pottsboro. I was very impressed by their quarterback, and uh, they had some young guys on the team who will be stepping up this year even more. So, you know, in that district right there, uh, and I'm, th- I'm thinking Pottsboro is going to run away with this district this year. They've got the air, air raid offense over there, I like to call it, and uh, they will air it out. And I'll tell you what, last year they did on the Tigers. They scored 35, we scored 60. But uh, I tell you what, that was a great game last year to be a part of and watch. It was just a score fest. And, you know, you've, you've got to outscore Pottsboro when you play them. <laughs> that's that's mm-hmm. the only way to beat Pottsboro. But, again, in that district right there, I see Pottsboro, Bonham, Commerce, Hal, Lone Oak, Van Alstine, and Reigns. Uh, you know, we were supposed to play Reigns last year, but it rained. Pardon yeah. the pun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was going to touch on that a little bit. Uh, there's a lot of teams in here that their overall record was uh, only nine games. Yeah. And that that's it. Early in the season last year, uh, uh, we had that one weekend where it was just nothing but thunderstorms all night long. Uh, speaking of possible – they they're gonna have it pretty tough too uh, with Van Alstine. Uh, Van Alstine's picked to win that district, and yeah. Bosboro's picked number two. I, I saw that in but, Dave Campbell's, but you know that's one of those situations where uh, that kind of that that can kind of be <laughs> misleading. <laughs> I, I tell you what, it's a lot misleading right there. You know, Bottom last year, uh, Bottom comes up and and they're playing uh, Eustis in the uh, in the first round of the playoffs, and Eustis. Uh, <laughs> surprises bottom last year, 59 to 34 in the by district round of the playoffs. Uh, that that was just uh, that was one of the the shockers of the of the state, and that was uh, 
the top that ranks in the top ten of Dave Campbell Football Magazine's uh, uh, most upsetting uh, victories of all last year in the playoffs. So of any classification, mm-hmm. and, and that was a, a pretty big feat. Coach uh, Steve Smith from Eustis, uh, they're going to have a great team this year. I, you know, Coach Smith, they won three of their four last games over there in Eustis this year, so they're not going to be a slouch by any means. And, they, they've uh, come a long way over the last few years. So. Well, they have, and, and to beat a team like Bonham out of the bat. So, and, you know, on any given day I say that, uh, you know, that your team can go out there and beat any other team. There's only 11 – they've been on the field at, at one time. So Absolutely. It, it's, uh, you know, it's going to be a chore. But uh, as you were saying, you know, Van Alstine picked to win that district. But my pick is Pottsboro until Van Alstine proves me wrong on that. But I, I would go po- uh, Pottsboro, Van Alstine, and Bonham. Uh, followed by Howe, Commerce, and uh, Lone Oak and Reigns. So until I see what Reigns has when we see them, you know, I, I think Reigns is still at the bottom of this district right now. Right. So and it's, a cl- it's a tough uh, region, too. I mean, that, that's a tough district right there. Uh, coming up September 13th, uh, we'll, the Malakoff Tigers will be traveling to Mahia to uh, play the Black Cats. Uh, last year, uh, the Tigers won here at home 48-10. Uh, to uh, Mejia is one of those teams, they're kind of in a rebuild. Uh, last season, I think they had an injury to their quarterback, uh, Jared, uh, uh, Jaden Proctor. But yeah. he seems to be healthy uh, this season and uh, has, has done a lot in the offseason getting himself ready for this. And, uh, you know, he's, he's probably going to be one of those guys you're going to have to look out for and keep an eye on all game long. And yeah. you're kind of a, a sports authority in that area, too, with uh, Grosbeck and Mahaya and Tig, because you used to cover that area uh, in the newspaper. Oh, those teams, uh, it wasn't nothing for them to beat up on each other. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you. Uh, especially the, the former rivalry they had with uh, Grosbeck, Mahaya and Grosbeck. And uh, a lot of people are hoping that will come back to fruition. Uh, Fairfield. I don't know how they do it. John Bachtel over there, he's another one of those coaches. He just seems to be able to pull out, you know, uh, uh, teams year in, year out that, that are competitive. And then, you you know, you got Teague and then uh, girls back over there. You and know. Uh, kind of direct our – don't mean to interrupt, but kind of direct our attention to the field right here. Uh, Mineola's JV in my – uh, first team JV and Malakoff's first team defense right now going at it. Uh, third down and about four yards to go, and uh, the Tiger defense kind of stiffened up right there. It made a great play on the run that Miniel was trying to uh, get to the left side of the field uh, that time. So the Tiger defense on the JV side of things uh, doing fairly well so far on this first drive against Mineola. Uh, go ahead, uh, Stephen. I tell you what, uh, uh, just uh, observing our defense out there, uh, man, that front line is is stout. Yeah, and there's a legal and, procedure right there on that play where uh, many other wide receiver jumps just a little bit too prematurely, and it's going to back them up five yards on that play. But you know, you you were talking about Mahaya, you know, you know, moving along uh, past Mahaya, then you've got uh, uh, you've the, got the big uh, Grandview game. Yeah, the big Grandview game. <laughs> And uh, that'll be uh, that'll be something to behold. And uh, that was one of our, our T-shirt uh, or our apparel sponsors right there, uh, Miss uh, Robin Rogers coming in, bringing our our hats to us. And uh, well, I tell you what a what a nice job they did on the embroidery work on our hats. And I, I'm I'm excited to put that on, but I don't want to get it messed up right now. So I'm just going to keep it right here and look at it. Oh, absolutely, those are nice. <laughs> There's a pass that oh. was deflected on that play right there. But anyway, getting back to what. Uh, what we were talking about. Um, and, and folks on the scrimmage game right here, they're going to run series of plays, probably about 15 on uh, offense, 15 on defense, and then the varsity will switch in uh, after that. And you'll see some of the varsity. The varsity, of course, will probably have numbers. You'll be able to distinguish those numbers as well on the back of the varsity players. Uh, we don't have rosters, so uh, we're going to have to bear with us on the names. Uh, some of the players I can tell just by looking at them. And, but, uh, you know, we don't have rosters, like I said, tonight. But uh, it's just a scrimmage game. And, and, and basically what we're doing tonight is we're tr- getting our systems in place for the season uh, and checking everything out, all of our equipment. We have video this year. So this is a first and uh, new year basically for us. Uh, Marcus and I have been doing this for five years now. And 
uh, we decided to venture off and, and, and do this again. Uh, we had a, uh, another sports network we ventured into together, and now we're doing the Malakoff Tiger, Spor uh, Tiger <coughs> Sports Network together as well. So uh, anyway, uh, we're talking about uh, region, uh, region 2 again. Uh, you've got another opponent down there from Malakoff they're going to face in the third week, or, yeah, fourth week, I'm sure. So fourth week, September 20th. Yes, uh, the rematch with Grandview, and they'll definitely be uh, – on the lookout for that win. <laughs> uh, well, I tell you, um, you know, uh, Dane, uh, Dane Yentz over there uh, for Grandview, the quarterback, offensive and defensive MVP of the state championship last year. Just a remarkable, remarkable young athlete and quarterback. Uh, and he's in the Texas top 100 of players to be on the lookout for this year, and, and good reason why. Anytime you're the defensive uh, MVP and the offensive MVP at quarterback, Oh, man, that's, that's, that's something special, and he's a great athlete in itself. But, you know, Malikoff has a lot of great athletes uh, themselves also. So I'm anxious to see how this season is going to start out and how it's going to finish up. So it, it's really kind of weird because, you know, you want to go and, and take the season in game by game, but then you want to get to that point where, okay, we're in the playoffs. Let's see how far we can go. And then in the blink of an eye, the season's over with, and then everybody's depressed again because football's over with. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> that's true. Uh in the state of Texas, I mean, yeah, you got your pro teams, you got your semi-pro teams, your arena league teams. But what everybody looks forward to every season is the start of Texas high school football. Oh, yes, it is. It, you know, the Tigers made it to the granddaddy of them all last year in that state championship. And, and to be able to do that for Malakoff is, you know, I'm still in awe that uh, Malakoff accomplished that goal. You know, we had a rough time in the 70s and 80s and – uh, even the, the 90s before the Tigers started, you know, turning the ties a little bit, making the playoff appearances. And, uh, you know, we get to Jamie, the Jamie Driscoll area, uh, excuse me, uh, the Jamie Driscoll era, and the Tigers are 99-24 and 24 over the past uh, 10 seasons. Jamie Driscoll, in fact, is one win away from 100 wins on the season, which I find is wow. just absolutely incredible. Uh, prior to that, to get 99 wins, they would have had to go back 30, 23 seasons, resulting in a 97 131 record. Wow. So it's a <laughs> big, <laughs> big change. That there. is a big change. And, uh, you know, the culture changed, the, the, uh, the attitude of winning changed. The close games that Malakoff didn't win, they learned how to win. And, uh, you know, that experience has been very great for the Tigers and has propelled them. Uh, to the point where they're at now getting state recognition uh, just about every year. So if you didn't know Malakoff, uh, you know, five years ago, uh, you know Malakoff now. Absolutely, absolutely. There, there's no no doubt about it. Um, you know, like you said, Coach Driscoll, uh, he's done a phenomenal job with this with this uh, Malakoff program. And uh, honestly, I think it uh, filters down all the way not just uh, into the junior high, but into the Pee Wee League, too. Uh, you know, we got some successful Pee Wee teams <laughs> out here. And it, and it shows because they, they move up and we still get that talent, you know, year in, year out in the upper programs. Listen, it, it starts in the Pee Wee League. The Pee Wee coaches are running the same systems that the, uh, the varsity football coaches are running. So it, it's, a, it's a program. It's a machine. And, uh, you know, Coach Driscoll, one of the good things about himself and the staff, they spent a lot of time down in the junior high and uh, watching those kids play and helping them out and grooming them also because that's their future. And they've done a great job, and you can see how it's turned out for them in the last year and the last three or four years for them uh, with just a great winning record and a winning percentage that, uh, you know, is one of the best in the state of Texas. So they do a great job at getting down there. But, yeah, it starts with the Pee Wee. You know, everybody wants to put that Malakoff Tiger hat on and play Friday night as a Malakoff Tiger. And it starts when you're young. For me, it started when I was young. For Marcus, it started when we were young. You know, we went to games. We watched guys play, and, and we wanted to be those guys. And it came our time to be those guys, and we was those guys, you know. And so it does start when you're young. And uh, the what Malakoff has done is a, a great group of – uh, the community the citizens their dads have stepped up, and they've wanted to, to emulate what Coach Driscoll and staff has done, and they've done a remarkable job getting the Super Bowls, winning Super Bowls and playoffs, and they're just doing a great job fundamentally teaching these kids as well at a young age now. Absolutely. And uh, that's, that's more than you can ask for. I mean, that's what you want 
uh, when you have a football program uh, is the success, successes uh, in the in the leagues uh, from uh, middle school elementary on up. You know that, like I said, that filters in to the uh, varsity teams, and that's why uh, you know why Malakoff's uh, had so much success over the last several seasons. Yeah, exactly right. Kind of zooming in on the action uh, down below us here uh, from the booth. Uh, looks like it's going to be third down and about two. Miniela trying to assert himself on the ground against the Tigers. But I tell you one thing I like about the Tigers, what they're doing, is you're seeing almost uh, eight to nine to ten, eleven hats on the ball every time that ball's being touched. And this defense is swarming for the Tigers right now on the JV level. And that's what you want to see out of your players. They're excited. They're enthusiastic. And I'm going to tell you something, folks. It's about 120 degrees on that uh, turf field right now for these kids. So I wouldn't it, doubt it, it's, it's a little warmer. Too. <laughs> There's another yeah. handoff, and, boy, he is pelted right there at the line of scrimmage. And, uh, matter of fact, he might have lost half a yard on that run. Uh, I don't think he gained anything at all. That will bring up fourth down, and they'll have to go back and restart. Maybe the uh, offense for the Tigers coming out, and they are, I believe. So, let's see. This is the varsity unit for the Tigers <clears throat> that will take the field now. And Mineola's varsity will uh, take the field as well. Trying to find out who's going to be on offense, who's going to be on defense, but we'll see here momentarily. Kind of wanted to get back to uh, Region 2. You know, there's there's a lot of discussion that Region 3 is the toughest uh, region in uh, Class 3A Division 1. I beg to differ. I, I believe that uh, Division 2 is where your state championship is going to lie this year. Uh, and, I, and I say that because you've got teams like Jefferson, Atlanta, and Gladewater. Uh, those, those three teams right there, are dangerous teams. Those are three teams that moved down two years ago in classification from 4A to 2A. Those teams right there are the teams. You've got Atlanta with one of the toughest, toughest schedules in, in, in 3A. They're playing Gilmore right off the bat, first game of the season. Then go to Gladewater, play Blue, uh, Pleasant Grove, uh, who was at the state championship <laughs> last year, and then at Liberty Alu. And that mm. is uh, 4A schools, and that is like uh, – Boy, that is a rough schedule for Atlanta. So yeah, if they is. get out of that uh, 500, they'll be good. And uh, that'll be set them up right for the playoffs. And here's Mineola's first uh, attempt on offense. And nice run right there. But a gain of two. And the Tiger defense uh, starts right where it left off last year, swarming to the ball. Yeah, there's. Uh, they just, man, it's just like they have a nose for it, you know. He started out there uh, to the right side, and before you knew it, he was just covered over. Yeah, very excited to see uh, what this Tiger defense is going to do. I can tell you probably uh, uh, Dylan Stearman's out there right now, uh, Camby and Trimble. Uh, looks like Diedrich Davis may be out there playing the left defensive end. Uh, and I have to look uh, and see. I know Colby Rush is probably out there. And I uh, have to look and see if I recognize any more. But, uh, yeah, a lot of these guys are out here on the starting lineup. Malakoff is uh, looking pretty good defensively. And this is a good running back for Mineola also. Uh, there's a nice little gain of about five on the run right there. And going to be third down and about two to go. So, Mineola, you know, Mineola, speaking of Mineola, uh, Yellow Jacket football, uh, you know, my gosh, Mineola two years removed from the state championship themselves. That's right. <coughs> um you know, this year, I mean, they have uh, that running back, uh, Travion Sneed. Uh, yeah, and that's who we're seeing right there, Travion Sneed he's, running the ball. Yeah, he's the one that just carried a while ago. Uh, they got wide receiver Cole Castleberry. And playing both sides of the ball is uh, Jackson Anderson. Uh, Anderson uh, had two brothers uh, off of that uh, championship team that signed on to play with uh, Texas A&M. Yeah, there they're running a 21 package, a 21 personnel, as I'd like to call it. Two backs in the backfield, and uh, they tried to run with Sneed right there, and Sneed lost yardage. So uh, they'll have to go back and, and then start it over again. I believe that's number five. Uh, if they don't get the first down, they start back at the 30-yard line, and they have X amount of plays to run. I believe the varsity's running uh, 10, 10, and 5, I believe. Maybe you have a live clock here, too. And that'll be a game-like situation. And uh, so that'll be good to see. But they're going to give them a little rest in between. Uh, well, the JV will come back onto the field also. It's so hot out there. And then the coaches and are all in black too. So. <laughs> oh, goodness. Not a good day to be wearing black. All black. It looks like the Tigers showing signs of blitzing right now. 
That's going to be Kobe Rush. And uh, Tigers showing a four-man front. Tell you Go. what, looks like they're going to try to run the ball. And watch Miniola here maybe try to pass the ball. A and they are out in the flats, no good. And that was a good play right there because the Tigers were showing signs of blitz right there. And then the Tigers, once the ball was uh, hiked, the Tigers secondary then kind of flowed back into that zone coverage right there. They did. And, they, uh, they, they were able to apply a lot of – a lot of pressure on the quarterback there, and then your safeties and uh, defensive backs. Yeah, and I'm going to tell you something. That, that, you know, everybody gets credit for secondary interceptions, and you get your linebackers that make great plays. But this front four for the Tigers don't get enough recognition because if you can cause pressure on that quarterback time in and time out, he's not going to have enough time to throw the ball, which is going to lead to errant passes, which leads to those interceptions and turnovers. So yeah, that's absolutely. what you want. There's another handoff right there to Snead, and, and I tell you what, Tigers just bottle him up. And, and I tell you what, the Tigers look quicker this year on defense already than they did last year, and they are just swarming the ball. Very impressive, very impressive so far. Yeah, they are. They're moving really quick on on the ball, uh, no doubt about it. You know, as as a as a former player, and we've all played football. Uh, as a former player, you know, uh, reaching that plateau to the state championship game is something that. You don't ever, as a kid, you dream about, but the in reality, it's a one in a million shot for some kids, and, and these kids have have reached the the state plateau, the state championship, the granddaddy of them all. They're going to come back and they're going to be hungry because they didn't lose that game by very much last year, my friend. They didn't lose it very much at all, and uh, they're they're hungry this year. They're going to be back. And I was, if I was a kid, right there's a nice blitz right there. And uh, I tell you what, a lot of pressure applied right there. And, oh, there's some pushing and shoving right there. And as you would expect uh, in a scrimmage game, a little pushing and shoving between players. And, uh, you know, they get a chance to bang and hit on somebody now that uh, uh, that they hadn't been able to do before, you know, That's because right. this is a scrimmage game and this is the first contact you're having with the opposing team. And uh, tempers flare a little bit. And uh, you know what? That's okay. I like it. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> but one thing, though, one thing, you can't do that in the game. You can't do that in a real game because no, you'll get kicked no out of that way. game real quick. So uh, you've got to compose yourself. Uh, I know it's hot out there and you lose your temper easy, but as a, as a, as a player, you have to learn composure. And, and I'm uh, sure, uh, you know, after that little scuffle, uh, I'm sure after this scrimmage, the coaches will get those guys in there, uh, the, whole, the whole team in stress, re-stress all that. Yeah, you, know, you, you can't them. you can't just let that go. You have to discipline that too as well. So, but listen, this is the first action these guys are getting to hit somebody else, and they're fired up. And you can see it out there right now. Twenty-one personnel package again. One wide receiver to the right, and they got the slot lined up right behind the right tackle. And then a quarterback keeper out of that little RPO right there, and goes to the left side and. Gains about uh, four yards on that run right there. So a nice little play, kind of a misdirection play, if you will. Right. I think that's the biggest uh, gain so far in this scrimmage for the uh, Mineola team. I'll tell you what, uh, you know, again, the Tiger defense is uh, looking very good early on here. I believe this is going to be play number seven that we're seeing out of the Mineola offense, maybe eight. You know, I've been talking to you. I haven't been keeping track. Shame on you, Stephen. <laughs> it's my fault, too, because uh, I was thinking about that before the broadcast. I wonder if I need to keep up with plays and, and all that stuff. But we've been too busy uh, going. Well, we, you know, it's our, our preseason, too. So <laughs> Yeah, it, it is our preseason. It's just a warm-up for us to, take all, uh, uh, to check all of our systems and programs out. And, boy, I'll tell you what, Malakoff in the backfield of Benny Yellow that time and no running room at all. Uh, for the mini yellow yellow jackets as the Malakoff Tiger defense does its job. And I believe now they're going to – looks like they may switch it out and bring in some different players here as maybe the ones get an opportunity to take a break. But I like what I've seen so far. I do too. Uh, really, really good aggressive play up front, quickness uh, out of that Malakoff uh, uh, front line there. And uh, – you know, imagine that uh, the coaches have, you know, a certain number of plays that they want uh, each of the players to uh, participate in, too. Yeah, well, you talk about depth. You need depth, especially when you get into the playoffs, when these guys get windy. You need depth. So getting these guys in, uh, the twos in, and getting them reps is what Malakoff really needs to do. They need to focus on some depth. 
And, and I think you'll see that. And this group applied a little pressure right there as a bad throw. It's kind of skipped it off the turf right there. Good coverage along our near sideline right here. But, uh, you know, the Tigers just getting some uh, other players some opportunity to get out there and, and have a shot at it. And uh, that's what it's all about right there. You're going to need to find, utilize every athlete on your team. Absolutely. Uh, at, at some point somewhere, and it's good to have, if you've got 28 kids or 32 t kids, utilize them everywhere and anywhere you can because that's going to be important uh, along the way. And, and listen, you know, Malakoff is, some would say that they've got maybe a weak district and, and you could throw maybe three teams in that you could possibly, you know, have that label. But, you know, Malakoff, Kemp, and Eustace, uh, which that's my pick in, in the three order right there, one, two, three, Malakoff wins the district. And then you've got uh, Kemp, then Eustace. Nice little run out there uh, on the right, right end by that uh, Mineola running back to gain uh, close to five yards. So, uh, But a uh, nice block by Mineola on that play also. But, uh, you know, the Tigers, uh, Kemp, and then Eustace in that order. And then uh, Matt Dallas, Madison, you don't know how they're going to be either. They had a pretty big upset last year as well in the playoffs. They upset Van Alstine 32-26, to your, your team that's favored to win it all that's true. Uh, in their district. So uh, that was a great game too. And, and uh, you know, Madison came back from 19 down uh, to force an overtime and go ahead and win that game in, in by district play. And that was just an amazing feat. So I want to say after the top two teams with Malakoff and Kemp, it's just a dogfight for who's the next two that's going to get into the playoffs. And listen, Kemp graduated a lot of people. I don't know how good they're going to be. I don't know how if they're going to be great, bad, or, or what. You never know until you see the teams play. But well, one thing about it, they always coach good over in Kemp, and they always play hard. Like you said, uh, they did lose a lot of people. They only have uh, uh, two uh, offense and two defensive uh, starters returning uh, from last year's team. Yep, and got both teams kind of getting into it again there. And I tell you what, uh, you like to see a little moxie out there and a little mixing it up uh, between the two teams early on. You just got to watch yourself, though. And like I said, it's all about composure, especially when you get into, when you get into game one. You got to watch yourself because, you know, sometimes these other teams will bait you into uh, misbehaving, so to speak. <laughs> That's true. It, uh, we've we've seen it time in and time out. Well, I was a good aggravator in school. That was uh, I used to love to aggravate other guys and get them to, <laughs> to hit me and then throw a flag. You know, we we practiced that a lot. <laughs> I was probably one of the guys that uh, fell for it all the time too. So. <laughs> Well, I, I won't say what else I used to do either. I don't want to give the kids no, no, out no, there no. We, a, we, a bad impression of uh, what you need to do in football and what you don't need to do. Sportsmanship. <laughs> That's what we preach is sportsmanship. That's right. Good sportsmanship. <laughs> so uh, do unto others you'd have them do unto you. <laughs> well, and that meant for me, if you cheap shot at me, I'm going to cheap shot you back. <laughs> sometimes you got to do what you got to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I was, I was always the one that got caught too. <laughs> but anyway, with that district, Malakoff Camp in Eustis, Madison, Life Oak Cliff, and A-plus Academy. I mean, I mean, listen, after the, after the two front runners, Malakoff and Kemp, this, this district's a dogfight. And, and you can't count A-plus out or Life Oak Cliff out e either uh, into making the playoffs. So it's going to be a pretty competitive district this year. And uh, looking forward to the district play. You know, before Malakoff uh, starts district play, they will have their bye week, which is uh, good for the Tigers to get a little bit of rest coming into, uh, into the district portion of their schedule. Right, absolutely. You can't count all, count those other teams out. Uh, you know, Life Oak Cliff uh, finished 0-5 in district last year, but uh, they they have uh, eight uh, offensive returners coming back and starters, and uh, seven on defense too. So, you know, look for them to possibly move up uh, the ladder in that district a little bit. Yeah, you know, it's very possible. You just never know what you're going to get with that school, though. It's just so hard to predict until you get out there and actually start playing them. You know, you don't know where it's coming from. There's a nice throw and catch on the far sideline right there. Kind of a one-two tippy-toe down in bounds catch, if you will, uh, and a nice throw, too. Tell you what, the quarterback put that ball right where no one else could get it. And the receiver jumped up, and that's probably your star receiver right there. That's probably him, uh, Castleberry. Uh, yeah, because uh, that was pretty heavily guarded uh, play right there. There was at least uh, three uh, Tigers in the vicinity very close to him when he caught that. Yeah, I think one of the players might have ran the wrong route, too. Uh, the short underneath route was kind of closer to Castleberry on that route on the outside, ran a little out pattern. And that almost got picked off, but the quarterback put enough air under it to just dart it right over the top of the defender. 
And there's uh, Tennyson on the run. Now he's running, boy, I tell you, running with some authority. They pick up their first first down of the scrimmage. But uh, that time he kind of sticks his shoulder down and plows over one of the Malakoff defenders. But, uh, you know, so far so good. This is uh, pretty much kind of the second unit in for the Tigers. Absolutely. Uh, I think um, the Yellow Jackets, they're, they're still playing a few of their starters uh, from uh, the first part of the scrimmage. Yeah, so, again, uh, we'd like to thank everybody kind of joining us. Uh, this is the Malcolm Tiger Sports Network you're listening to and watching. And uh, we're glad that you're a part of this uh, telecast broadcast today. And uh, there will be more. Every game, home and away, the Tigers uh, play in. Uh, we will have that game covered for you. Uh, Marcus Dow, myself, and uh, Stephen Ferris, and then uh, Aaron, uh, Aaron Scott. I almost called you Austin again, but Aaron Scott. <laughs> I'm thinking of my buddy that, uh, that's a school teacher, and, and I used to referee with him. I think when I, every time I do football, I think about Aaron Aaron Austin because we used to referee football together. And it doesn't, help that, it doesn't help that my name's Austin. and I, ha- I mean, my name's Aaron, and I have a son named Austin. So. Yeah, yeah, that's right, and, and both of you guys are my friends as well, so, you know, it, it, that doesn't help at all. Looks like the JV unit's going back in now and to run some uh, probably some offensive plays here as Mineola was was on the offensive side of things first in that scrimmage. That first set of plays, I believe it was 15 plays. Uh, no scrimmage score yet to report. Mineola couldn't uh, move the ball really past the uh, the 10-yard barrier. Uh, so Malakoff defense really did a great job. Interesting to see here what the Tiger JV uh, will come up here uh, with against Mineola. And, you know, uh, just kind of looking at our, our guys, uh, that JV front uh, front line on offense is Pretty hefty, too. Yeah, they, they look pretty solid up there up front. And, that, and we'll see right now what's going to happen. And that's probably uh, Coach Driscoll's son that's quarterbacking right now for the Tiger JV. There's a handoff right there. Oh, good-looking run, 35-40. Oh, wow. Shedding tackles across midfield, and he may be gone. 40-30, 25-20, ran a bounce at the 22-yard line. What a nice run that time. By the Tigers. I wish I knew that young man's name. Couldn't shake that last uh, defender, but, hey, that was a heck of a run. Uh, how many – man, he, he had to break at least uh, four or five tackles there early on. Yeah, it depends on when they spotted it. They actually spotted it at the 15, so uh, that is actually going to be a uh, 55-yard pickup on the play for yes. the Tigers. So, uh, first play from scrimmage for the JV. Not too bad. No, not bad at all. That's a great way to start uh, your JV team uh, on offense. And there's a uh, another – it's going to be a quarterback keeper on the RPO right there. Quarterback running tough. And uh, tell you what, uh, going to pick up about three or four yards on that run. So it will bring up second down and about two yards to go. Uh, for the Malakoff Tigers, make that three yards to go. I was trying to zoom in on the camera there and check everything out. That's a good run uh, there up the middle. It almost looked like he was going to be stopped right there at the line of scrimmage, uh, but he was somehow managed to uh, slip by that one defender and pick up a good uh, seven, yard, seven, eight yard gain. Let's see what the Tigers do this time. Uh, one back set in the backfield, two wide receivers, one to the left and one to the right. Man in motion out of the slot from left to right. It's going to be a run to the right. And there goes that man, Mama, for a touchdown, I believe. Let's see if he got in. Now they're going to oh. mark him short about the goal line, close to the goal line. Looks like they're marking him down at the one. Yep. So it looks like that's going to be first down and goal for the Tigers there. And this is the Tiger JV, folks, that's playing right now. Pretty impressive so far. Uh, this is, they've only ran three plays and and uh, gone almost 70, 70 yards here. Yeah, and uh, I tell you what, looking good early on. And, and we talked about the program a little bit earlier. Uh, if you're just joining us, you know, Coach Driscoll's been running the same program for eleven. This is eleventh year now, and it's trickled down from you know junior high all the way up. And, and before junior high, Pee Wee, there's a touchdown right there by the Tigers. Tigers make it look easy. Tiger JV scores. And in scrimmage, uh, that's a, that just counts as one point. But we're not going to count that because this is not the varsity. So uh, once the varsity uh, scores a touchdown, then we will count that play 
and then you'll see one up there on the scoreboard for one touchdown. And that's how you score a scrimmage. Now, there will be a live portion of this scrimmage uh, that will probably take place immediately following the uh, the last play from scrimmage that both teams get through uh, completing. And usually they run about a 10-minute clock on that scrimmage, and they run everything live, including the kickoff, and they'll run distance time and down and, and so forth. And we'll see if they do that tonight. Uh, not sure, but they, they possibly could do that is what we're thinking. That's the part the uh, coaches l really look forward to is that last part of the scrimmage, everything's live and no holdbacks. <laughs> Two wide receivers left, one to the right, man in motion from right to left. And it's going to be a little quick pass to the outside. Nice pass right there, 35, slung down about the 38-yard line. And a uh, nice little uh, nice catch pass and catch right there. Strong arm right there. Coach Driscoll's son uh, throwing the rock right there and looking pretty good doing it. So looks like an eight-yard pickup on the play, second down and two for the JV Tigers. So, uh, again, that, you know, that's pretty excited, man. You, you get these kids out there, giving them a shot and opportunity, and, and, and they're making the best of it right now in this JV group. And you might even see some of these kids by the time the year is up uh, move up to that varsity level to uh, add some depth to the varsity. Yeah, that's true. Uh, you know, you never know, and you, and you hope uh, your team stays healthy, but um, that's one reason you got some of these guys on the JVs Boy, to come on up. Yeah, what a nice play that was right there. Motion went to the left from right to left, and everyone went with a motion right there. And there's a little quick pass to the inside receiver, and he, he weaves and bobs his way across the midfield stripe down to the 45-yard line. So a great play right there by the Tiger JV. About a 12-yard gain on that uh, play right there. So they're moving the ball uh, pretty much at will if you if – you Look at it and uh, look at the pass uh, plays before that first touchdown they, they scored. Yes, sir. They are looking good doing it. See what they do this this play here. Tigers uh, JV right now. Three wide receiver set to the left. One to the right. Ball marked on the near side hash mark. A man in motion right to left. It's going to be a little jet sweep. And uh, that play gets back to the original line of scrimmage, maybe gaining half a yard on the play. Yeah, so, that, a nice little, uh, nice little half yard gain, <laughs> if you will. Not much blocking there. So, uh, Tigers need to work on that. No, that one, uh, that one had potential to break open to a, a huge gain, but it uh, well, somehow closed up pretty quick. There. I, I thought the left, of, the right defensive end for Miniello had a seal. Or the uh, left defensive tack left offensive tackle for the Tigers had a seal on the right defensive end, and he should have went around there, but he cut it up instead. So, right. Tigers going with a heavy set right there. Going to be a handoff to the right side. Nice little uh, run going right there for the Tigers. And I tell you what, the running back right there keeps his feet moving and is able to gain an extra two or three yards by doing so. So a nice little run by the Tiger back that time for the JV. Yeah, that's uh, that's uh, what you want to instill in your running backs. Basically, any any player that carries the ball for your team, keep those legs moving, because you never know, never know when uh, you might just break away, when when things don't look, you know. Well, they look bleak, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've got uh, you've got the Miniola in the orange tonight, Malakoff in the white. Uh, if you're just joining us, welcome to the Malakoff Tigers Sports Network. I'm Joey Snowden, along with Stephen Ferris and. Aaron Scott and Jonathan Snowden. So uh, Tigers JV now on the drive, or some might say on the prowl. Single back in the backfield. One wide receiver to the far left side of the field, one to the right. Ball spotted on the near side hash. Tigers run to the short side of the field. I believe the first down is picked up across the 35 down to the 34-yard line for Malakoff. And uh, that was as Marcus calls him uh, uh, Driscoll the pistol right there on that little quarterback <laughs> run. So we're missing Marcus tonight, guys. He will be a part of our broadcast. Yes, he will. Uh, he is having a family reunion in Fort Worth, Texas tonight. Marcus, if you're out there, shout out to you, my friend. And uh, just to let everybody know, shout outs are back. 
Marcus is the uh, shout-out king. He got a birthday, anniversary. Yep. Anything going on, give Marcus a ring on game day, and he'll certainly give you a shout-out. Yeah, Marcus, we certainly do miss you. Hashtag that is all. <laughs> <laughs> hey, oh, I my, had, oh, my. <laughs> I had to shout that out for him, you know. <laughs> There's a, another handoff right there for the Tigers. Nice little cutback against the grain and a nice run before he stacked up. Uh, across the 30-yard line down to the Mineola 28-yard line. That's so, gain of about uh, six yards on the play. Pretty nice little run by the the running back there. He didn't give up at all. Uh, even when he was, you know, stacked up there, he kept, he still kept trying to chug on, you know. Well, and the biggest thing that I saw right there, he was patient finding that hole. He kind of uh, stopped a little bit and then saw the hole open and then darted through that hole, that open lane right there, and picked up a nice gain of six on the play. So that's what you want to see out of your running back. Sometimes a running back can push the issue too much and, and run where the defenders are at, and that's not, you don't want to do that. You want to let the play develop. Let that big offensive line open up a hole for you, find that hole, and then hit it. Right, absolutely. So a, a good job of uh, a vision right there. For the Tiger running back, uh, it takes vision to be a running back, I tell you. Having the ability to have that vision, uh, to cut back, uh, to stop on a dime, and then you know take off again. Looks like Tiger's going empty set backfield now. Four wide receivers, two right, two to the left. Tight end lined up on the right. Looks like a fake jet sweep. Quarterback throws down the middle of the field, has an open receiver, but uh, in preseason form, just not fast enough right there as on the receiver's part. Yeah, it looks like uh, he, th he kind of uh, threw it over the wrong shoulder there because the receiver had to almost turn uh, his upper torso completely around just to see where the ball was. Well, you had that inside receiver there running the flag pattern right there, and, and uh, I thought the ball was thrown well. Just the, the receiver uh, just couldn't get there, basically. Mm -hmm. He did put a lot of air under the ball, which I'd rather for him to do that than throw it short and be, have it intercepted. So oh, yeah, anytime absolutely. you're a quarterback, you know, I'd rather you throw it to uh, somebody that's not there than somebody that is there. <laughs> <laughs> if you got to throw it to somebody who's not there. So Tigers here with a third down they're faced with on the JV. Again, uh, Coach Jamie Driscoll and his staff uh, – with 99 wins for his career, and that first game at Teague could be the 100th win. There's a nice little run right there by the Tiger back. Oh it's goodness. fumbled and caught by one of the Tigers' offensive linemen, and, boy, he rumbles <laughs> downfield for a first. My goodness. That was a heads-up play there by the young offensive lineman. Well, I tell you, Christmas came early. Uh, I always wanted that as a lineman. I wanted that ball to drop out of the sky right into my bread basket so I could take off running with it. I wish he we, did. He, he lived the dream for me right there vicariously. <laughs> I could have swear he had that surprise look when the ball landed in his basket right there. <laughs> <laughs> he was probably like, oh, Lord, I caught it. Thank you. <laughs> and, uh, you know, that, that's uh, pretty quick thinking, too. He, he looked like he knew what he needed to do with the ball, too. He just, well, I tell you what, he, he did a good job following that ball right there, and the ball popped up in the air. And I saw that same play almost in Kemp, except the Tigers were kicking an extra point, and that's how Kemp won that game against Malakoff. Uh, it's called field awareness, and no one was aware where the ball went. Uh, after it was kicked, it went, uh, it was blocked and straight up in the air and then caught by a Kemp defender, and he raced probably 97 yards for a two-point conversion, and that's pretty much how Kemp won that football game there. But uh, that time that young man was savvy enough to follow the ball with his eyes he followed it up in the air and it came down in his arms he caught it he's probably sh uh, just kind of stunned that he did catch it being a lineman <laughs> yeah, but uh, he did indeed and uh, <laughs> every he, lineman's he, dream <laughs> yeah he took it about 10 yards he was rumbling and bumbling down there uh, icing on the cake would have been another touchdown but hey we got uh, Marcus uh, tuning in and listening to us and uh, he's, he's saying greatness the sound and the visual so thanks Marcus we uh Needed to hear some feedback from some of the public, so if you guys can, hit us up on our Facebook page, on the Malakoff Tiger Sports Network Facebook page. If you haven't gave us a like, give us a like, and uh, let us know how we're doing. We'd appreciate the feedback. So it looks like a third down situation from the 10-yard line for the JV Tigers. And uh, tell you what, very impressed with this little JV group of Malakoff uh, right now so far, guys. Oh, yeah. Uh, they're, they're playing uh – Real aggressive football. Uh, look like they got a lot of speed out there, too. Yeah, yeah, it does. And this is what you want to see out of this JV group as well. 
Uh, you want to see productivity, and that's what we're seeing right now. They're moving the football, and, you know, not a lot of mistakes. Not a lot of mistakes. There's a quarterback keeper by Driscoll, and Driscoll powers his way into the end zone. What a gamer that young man is. Wow. Uh, there's some kicking and pushing going on in the right <laughs> corner of the end zone by by uh, Mineola defender to Malakoff offensive player. But uh, they'll get over that, and the coaches pull them aside and uh, get in that ear and say, son, that's not going to be called for. But uh, a great job by Driscoll. Driscoll runs it into the end zone for the score right there. And I'm telling you, uh, that was a tough run by the young fella. It was. It was no uh, no cakewalk into that end zone. Uh, he had to go up against uh, at least three, four defenders and then uh, carried a few of them into the end zone with him. Uh, yeah, that's what's surprising is the power. And, uh, folks, we're going to take an opportunity right now before we get started uh, with the varsity uh, to take a couple of uh, commercial breaks here while Stephen and I uh, catch our breath and get some water. Folks, you're listening to the Malakoff Tiger Sports Network on the SHN Sports Channel. A home is not a home because of the room dimensions or the color of the walls. It's about how you feel when you walk through the front door. It's the vision you have along with the warm feelings in your heart when you realize that this is where God wants you to be. Your experience is more than real estate with me. It's about your life and dreams. At Keller Williams, independent agent Dennis Fires takes the approach of your home buying choice and dreams to heart. Dennis is a small town guy with a servant's heart. With Dennis Flowers as your next realtor, Dennis will listen to your wants, needs, and dreams and find solutions tailored to you by using all the latest technology market research, and business strategies to exceed your expectations. If you're looking for an honest, hardworking realtor, then choose Malakoff's own Dennis Flowers, an independent agent of Keller Williams. Dennis proudly supports the Malakoff Tigers and Lady Tigers and wants to wish them good luck this sports year. You can call Dennis at 972-938-2222 or 214-980-3906. That's 972-938-2222 or 214-980-3906. Or email Dennis at teamflowers at kw.com. Dennis can also be found on Facebook and Twitter. Do you need to replace a roof, build a deck, or replace those old floors you've been wanting to do, but time is your worst enemy? Well, wait no longer. Huff Daddy Construction LLC has you covered, and they are your one stop for all your residential construction needs around Cedar Creek Lake, Lake Palestine, Richland Chambers, Navarra Mills, and Lake Livingston. Huff Daddy covers all Central and East Texas Lake areas and more. At Huff Daddy Construction LLC, we pride our company on reliability, great communication, integrity, and quality work that's backed by a guarantee that we stand by. We strongly believe in giving our absolute best in all of our projects, no matter how big or small. We are the experts in our trade, and we will always keep you educated on your particular task or project. We do all residential construction and projects so that you don't have to. With affordable prices, what are you waiting for? We look forward to earning your business. Remember, there's no job too big or too small. We do them all. Some of our services are additions, remodeling, bathroom remodeling, kitchen remodel, porch build, or replace. Window replacements, wood decks to top it off, and we specialize in roofing and tile floors. You can call Matt Tenney today at 281-254-9494. That's 281-254-9494. Or call Mr. Anthony Reasoner at 949-275-8564. That's 949-275-8564 for your free bid today. All right, folks, welcome back to the Malakoff Tiger Sports Network and on the SHN Sports Channel. And I'm Joey Snowden, joined today with Mr. Stephen Ferris. Uh, and Stephen uh, joining us because Mr. Dow, Marcus Dow, the Hall of Famer, he is uh, gone today on hiatus, uh, family reunion this weekend. So he's going to go uh, shake a leg and dance a little bit and eat, eat a lot of good food. There's a pass downfield by the Tigers, caught. And what a great pass by Darion Peace. And uh, not exactly sure who that receiver is there. That's Andreas Garrett, I'm told, by the great uh, Paul Loper. Tiger statistician, been doing it for years. That sure got the uh, Tiger sideline fired up there. Coaches, too, I'll tell you. Well, I'll tell you what, with a pass and catch like that, it has me fired up. That, that was a great execution. And also, hey, let's give the line a big uh, shout-out right there because that was great pass blocking by the offensive line for the Tigers. Absolutely. Tigers come out, four wide receiver set, one man in motion from right to left. Looks like the RPO play right there. Darion Peace calling his own number, stacked up and dropped for about a half a yard loss on the play. So that, hey, you kind of hate to see that, uh, you know, that RPO. I, I don't want to see my quarterback get hit in preseason like that either because, you right. know, hey, I don't know who's uh, 
who's left behind Darian Peace, the quarterback. I know you've got Nathan Jones and uh, some others that could quarterback as well, but uh, I'd rather have Darian Peace because he's the proven guy back there. Tigers come out, two wide receivers left this time, one to the right, single back in the backfield. Looks like 22, and that's probably going to be Dedrick Davis, I believe, but I'm not too sure. It's going to be a little screen pass, and, uh, oh, just in and out of the hands of the intended receiver. Yeah, just looks like it might have been Hart reach. right there. Possibly Deuce Hart on that uh, drop ball right there. Not sure. And, and Deuce Hart is a sophomore this year. I want to talk about Deuce because Deuce Hart – uh, has an opportunity to have a big, big season for the Tigers. He is what you call a scat back. He's used kind of like a Tyreek Hill is used uh, for the Kansas City Chiefs. And piece back to pass, looks right, throws right in the back corner of the end zone, jump ball, and that ball is incomplete. Nice coverage that time by the Mineola defenders on that play. So uh, piece again, putting the ball right where it needed to be. Uh, so great job that time. Just couldn't connect with the wide receiver. Brings up a third and uh, <coughs> fourth down and nine. Yeah, it's going to be fourth down right now, nine yards to go. Tiger's going to be uh, three wide receivers to the left, one to the right. Tell you what, uh, uh, certainly like a maybe a, a slant pattern right here, that far wide receiver. They're going to roll it to the left under duress. Throws it downfield. Wobbly pass. Oh, goodness. And receiver is up and it almost came down with a nice catch right there. One-handed catch, but uh, great defensive play right there. And uh, I believe that's Andreas Garrett flipped up in the air, and you don't want to see him get hurt either, especially in the first scrimmage of the game. And, and I talk about scrimmages. One of the goals in a scrimmage is to come out as healthy as possible. You don't want to get any of your players hurt in a scrimmage. Uh, especially right here knocking on the first game of the season. It's door. It no, looks, definitely not. A, <clears throat> looks like a, it's like he's getting looked at a little bit there. Maybe getting a refresher uh, drink uh, from the sideline. Well, he, he took a pretty there. good spill right there, and he's, he's going to be jarred up a little bit. I can tell you right now. I, I can't even imagine jumping that high. I, I don't think I could get two inches off the ground. He was about three foot. <laughs> yeah, it looked like he almost landed on the hip when he came down. Uh, one thing's for sure, you don't need to get him injured. Tigers now with a two-back set in the backfield. Wide receiver to the left and to the right. Ball is spotted in the middle of the field. Man in motion. It's going to be a handoff, and that's probably.
He's going to get those tough yards for you. He's not the fastest in the world, but he does have some jets. And uh, the most uh, important thing, well, one of the biggest things that I like about him is his hands. He's very sure-handed. Yeah, you could tell definitely uh, evident on that play right there. Two wide, four, two wide receivers to the right, two to the left, and uh, many yellow decides they want to substitute somebody in at the last second. That's one of the things you can get away with in preseason you can't get away with in game time. Uh, plus having your coaches on the field, too, to come whisper in, in your yeah. ear. <laughs> Looks like that right defensive end is lined up off sides for Mineola and uh, stepped oh. up in the pocket right there. A nice swing out in the backfield, and that young man is going to be across the 40-yard line into Mineola territory at the 37-yard line he goes. Uh, that one's going to come back on us. Yeah, a little penalty in the backfield. But, yeah. uh, you know, that uh, right defensive end for Mineola was off sides. His head was over the ball, and uh, I'm not sure what that gentleman down there was seeing, but, uh, hey, that's okay. I'm going to miss a lot, too. (laughs) Uh And and kudos to the officials, too. These guys are out here in the heat. Uh, This is their first scrimmage of the year. These guys get hot. Uh, You know, some of them come in out of shape. I was that way, too, when (laughs) I was an official. But kudos to these guys for doing this. Right. They do a there's a thankless nice, job. Yeah, it is a thankless job. There's a little handoff right there, and nothing really doing as a mini yellow defense kind of stiffens up right there. And I never did see a signal of what went on, but, you know, like you said, this is a scrimmage. Uh, they don't expect anybody up here in the press box anyway. So Yeah, exactly, exactly. And, and you know, there's some players out here that we just don't know right now because some of the numbers are wrong, even the guys up here in the box with us. Paul Oper, Coach Norris, Mr. Randy Perry, they they don't they can't tell some of these kids out either, just like us. So it's probably one of the only uh times of the year that schools uh programs can actually <laughs> you know, hide their players. Empty backfield set, rows back to pass, looks ahead uh in the middle of the field and then ha- throws a duck because he's hit. He got sandwiched on that play. Yeah. yeah, not a lot of time right there to throw that ball at all as uh Mineola defense that front four got a lot of pressure up front against the Tiger offensive line that time. Yeah, they closed in real quick on that play. So the Tigers will uh step up to the original line of scrimmage. It'll be third down and 10 to go. It's a controlled part of the scrimmage here. Tigers are up in the controlled part of the scrimmage by a score of 1-0 to zero in the varsity action. The JV action, 0-0, zero to zero, no one scored yet. No, excuse me, it's 1-0 to zero Malakoff that they have scored in the JV. So third down here, let's see what Rose and company can do. There's a snap, low snap. Rose rolls to his right, throws downfield. Oh, oh, what a great pass right there. And still going and on his feet is Andreas Garrett, and he is just ripping defenders with him as he goes downfield. And there's some more pushing and shoving going on, and one of the Tigers gets Andreas Garrett to the side and said, hey, let's go on back to the huddle. We did the damage on that, and everything is good. So great catch and run. And that was great ball placement by the quarterback, Keevy Rose, right there. He throws it right over the defender's head. He puts a little air underneath it right there and, and put it in a place only his receiver is going to catch it. That is a great throw. Matter of fact, some pros can't even make that throw right there, Stephen. <laughs> That's true. I, yeah, you're I'm absolutely right. I'm not going to say right. anything about the backup quarterbacks of the Dallas Cowboys, no, 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 but, no. Uh, <laughs> hey. First down and 10, two wide receivers to the left, uh, two to the right. There's a little uh, screen pass, and that was kind of a little jailbreak uh, wide receiver screen, and uh, that was nicely broken up by Mineola's defense on that play right there, Stephen. Yeah, they came in with a with a lot of pressure on that play. He threw it before he really wanted to on that. Yeah, he did, and and he had some pressure in his face at the time as well. And and Malikoff's just trying to do a little uh, screen pass to the receiver. And give him some opportunity to use his legs and run downfield. Listen, that's going to be the key. Short passes, get the ball uh, quickly out to your receivers, give your receiver athlete a chance to run. And that's going to be very important for the Tigers this year. Yeah, you got to got to work on those plays, especially uh, when you got some defensive backs out there that can keep up with you step by step down that field, you know. Jones in motion for the Tigers, two wide receivers to the left. It's going to be a handoff to the left side. And uh, what was some pretty good uh, running room closed down pretty quick by the Mineola defensive uh, 
Looks like a defensive back there that comes up and makes a tackle after about a two or three yard pickup on the play by the Tigers. So uh, I would say right there, blocking kind of let down a little bit. Uh, initially, like big number 55 got a hold of uh, or, or made the first initial contact but could not uh, form that seal on the outside for the running back to get around, and the uh, defender just came right off the off the block right there and made the tackle. Yeah, too, they've been playing uh, out here in this heat for, what, about, uh, about oh, yeah. an hour now? It, it's hot. Third down and eight to go for the Tigers. Trips to the left. There's going to be an inside screen again. Ball pass to number 42. And close oh. to the pylons he goes, and it's going to be pushed down a bounce close to the one-yard line. First down and goal for the Tigers. I think that, man, he uh, he came real close to uh, adding, putting another uh, – Another touchdown up there on the board for the Tigers. Well, I tell you what, what I liked right there, he caught the ball when contact was made. He kept those feet just to driving enough to get those extra hard yards, and uh, he fought for every yard he got on that one. And they're actually going to spot the ball down at the two-yard line. So it'll be uh, first down and goal from the two for the Tigers. This is where Malakoff's always dangerous right here. They could throw the ball or they could run the ball. You never know what the, what's going to happen. I, w I would think uh, they a pistol formation right here. Maybe look for a run right here, right off the gut. Yeah, right, right off, uh, right off hand here. Rose maybe changing the play at the line of scrimmage. It's going to be a handoff. Good inside pressure. Fumble oh, on the play. Goodness. Mineola looks to recover, and that's what I was afraid of right there on the play. And maybe the Tigers did recover the, that fumble. They did. So great job. Heads up play by one of the Tigers to jump on that football. But I wow, tell how you. Did, how did he come away with that? Because it looked definitely like one of the Yellow Jackets had that one wrapped all up. Well, it's one of those things where you get down into a pile right there. Uh, a lot of things happen in that pile where sometimes that ball is yeah. taken away. So it could <laughs> have been true. the case. And looks like they're taking a timeout on the field. We'll take a timeout in the booth as well. Folks, you're listening to Malakoff Tiger Sports Network on SHN Sports. Are you closer to 50 than you are to 30? Now you can get back to that 30 year old body and you don't have to wait any longer. The brand new state of the art MTX Fitness Center is right here in good old Malakoff, Texas. At MTX Fitness Center, we have a wide variety of equipment for beginners or the avid weight lifters. We also have a cardio room with availability for daily workouts. They said if you build it, they will come. Well folks, Brandon Phillips and family built it and now it's your turn to come on in and get signed up to work on improving your overall health and dropping those unwanted pants sizes. No more driving to other cities to work out. You save money, time, and gas. Our prices here at the MTX Fitness Center is just $39.99 a month with a one-time enrollment fee of just $19.99. What a deal, right? We've got another deal for you also. We offer discounted rates for military, fire department, law enforcement, teachers, and senior citizens. Go on by and see them at 414 West Royal Boulevard. They're right next door to the Sonic. Or you can call MTX Fitness at 903-880 2172. Again, that is 903-880-2172. Go Tigers! Child care is something in these times that we all need. Peace of mind while your work is something that we all need. At Noah's Ark Christian Academy, you will get the very best of child care and peace of mind. Tina Crawford and her staff run a top-notch daycare where every child is treated like her own. Your children will be engaged, entertained, fed, kept clean, and learn how to play with others while following a well-established schedule. Established in 2011 by Tina, Noah's Ark provides care for children from 6 weeks to 12 years of age. Their program is based on the advocate curriculum for the ages of 18 months to pre-K. They strive to give the best education, care, and love to all children and parents who enter their doors. Speaking of doors, you can rest assured that Tina runs a very secure daycare where visitors will be verified before entrance to the building can be gained. What are you waiting for? Peace of mind is just a phone call away or a visit for your child care needs with Noah's Ark Christian Academy. Noah's Ark Christian Academy is located at 1312 East Royal Boulevard in Malakoff, Texas. The phone number for Noah's Ark is 903-489-2100. Business hours are Monday through Friday, 6.30 a.m. to 6.30 p.m. Noah's Ark can also be found on Facebook. Joy. Tina and her staff are huge supporters of the children at Malakoff ISD. You know why? No, Marcus. Tell us why. Well, it's because a lot of them came through her daycare. Tina and all her staff would like to wish the Malakoff Tigers and Lady Tigers good luck this school year. All right, folks. Welcome back to the Malakoff Tigers Sports Network. I'm Joy Snowden. 
joined along in the booth today by Mr. Stephen Ferris and Mr. Aaron Scott with Jonathan Snowden as our cameraman. And, uh, folks, this is something brand new for us this year. JV out on the field right now, by the way. And a uh, while ago, just got uh, word that that was, uh, that was uh, Mr. Cannon Poteet that scored that touchdown for the Tigers. Uh, that would be uh, Coach Poteet's son from Trinity Valley scoring that touchdown. So, uh, young man looking good out there on the field for the Tigers. But uh, moving along here, JV action. Uh, Tigers are up 1-0 on this controlled portion of the scrimmage. I'd like to thank everyone who's joined the broadcast today, telecast. This is our first one of many to come, and today is kind of a day that uh, is our preseason game uh, also, Stephen. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, we had to we had to get prepared here in the booth to, <laughs> uh, get, you know, work out the kinks in our game plan. And, uh, yeah. I think I think uh, so far we we're done pretty good. Just like uh, the Malakoff Tigers are doing pretty good on the uh, football field out there. Yeah, they're looking pretty good for the first scrimmage, Stephen. Uh, looking very good uh, defensively as well. There's a nice little run by the Minnesota quarterback, getting close to first down yard. It's going to be about a yard shy though of uh, that yard to gain marker. But uh, yeah, getting back uh, to to varsity, I think they're looking pretty well right now. There's there's some questions that they still have to answer. Uh, on that offensive front, I think they will. And we, we saw some breakdowns in uh, uh, in pass blocking a while ago, and it led to a couple of quarterback pressures from Mineola. But, uh, you know, in those instances like that, you have to, have to give Mineola credit also because they're out there playing uh, hard as well, trying to impress their coaches and family. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, that they by far uh, shown that they're, they're not going to be a knockoff uh, tonight uh, defensively uh, they had a few uh, a few good plays there where they kind of held Malakoff uh, to uh, some short yardage but the one thing uh, Mal- Mineola hadn't done yet tonight and that's because of the good uh, uh, defensive showing by the Tigers is gain yardage on the offensive side of the ball yeah Tigers doing very well on defense and, uh, you know, here's the thing. The Tigers are going to start out the season. They've got a rough uh, first four games, if you will. Uh, but those four games should get them prepared for district play. The Tigers, it's imperative they come out healthy at each game of the, each game that they play in those first four games, especially that Grandview game. And, and I'm telling you, that that is going to be a hard-hitting game against Grandview. I'm excited already for that game to already be here. Uh, but I've got to control myself because it's not here, and we've got to get through the first three games first before uh, <laughs> that gets here. But uh, it's going to be a great season, I think, for the Tigers. And one thing you want to see, these young guys that are stepping into these roles where uh, we lost some players last year due to graduation for this year, uh, you know, maturation, the maturation process. They've got to get in, and they've got to uh, get in where they fit in, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, these guys are going to get in here, and they're going to start to feel comfortable. They're going to get that varsity action. Uh, they're going to see that the varsity level is a little bit faster than it was on JV, and uh, they have to get acclimated to that. And once they do, I think, uh, Stephen, they'll be just fine. Uh, you know, I want to talk about uh, last year just real quick. Uh, it was the Kemp game in my mind that I go back to where Kemp uh, defeated Malakoff here in Malakoff, uh, 22-20. to 20. They had the whole incident where the, the flag stabbed into the field, and there was a lot of uh, – things thrown around between uh, everyone. Uh, but that game right there, I think, propelled the Tigers throughout the playoffs. I think that uh, after that game, the Tigers went through the playoffs. Um, I don't want to say with ease because each game was hard in the playoffs, but that helped them uh, because they had that game won and they could have won the district championship. And uh, that helped the Tigers right there. It propelled them into the position to go to the state championship last year. So, um, you know, what you want to do this year, though, is not wait that long. You want to cultivate that talent as quickly as possible if you can. Uh, and then, you know, you've got to have these extra players, and we talk about the twos and the threes, to come in and fill that role uh, and give breathers to these guys that are, that are starting on the offensive line, defensive line. You've got to have that backup. The backups need to be just as good as, the, as your starters. Do. Absolutely. You, you know, talking about uh, you don't 
don't want to wait until the end of the season to have a, a letdown like that during the regular season uh, to, you know, propel you the rest of the way. But, you know, if you if you got the depth and uh, you got the talent, and which this Malakoff Tiger team definitely does, you want to hit the gas and keep your foot on it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and, you know, the Tigers have the perfect opportunity to do that. Like I said, it, it's going to be no cakewalk by any means for the Malakoff Tigers this year. Uh, this is a new year. We talked about the state championship appearance, the first time in school history the Tigers appeared uh, was last year, and we broadcasted those games. And what a what a thrilling uh, feeling uh, that was for all of us. I, I remember uh, sitting, uh, eating at a barbecue restaurant there at Frisco at the Star, uh, before the uh, the playoff game against uh, Brock, which that was, you talk about a great game to watch. That was one of the greatest games in high school football that I've ever been a part of, and I was thankful to be able to broadcast that game as well. But uh, sitting there with Bill Mullins and uh, Benny Rogers, we talked about the moment. Uh, if the Tigers can beat Brock, it's going to set us up for a state championship. It's, it's uncharted territory. That game with Brock was uncharted territory for us. Uh, it was just a magical, magical feeling <clears throat> to be able to not only broadcast that game but be a part of history. And, and I'm happy that I was able to do that and share that with, with my cohorts and, and friends. And, uh, you know, as players, uh, you might not get that opportunity to do that, but you may have an opportunity to share in that moment as a fan, spectator, uh, broadcaster, uh, principal, you know, uh, superintendent, anything uh, in that nature. As a teacher, staff member, it doesn't matter. Uh, it was just a special year, and I, I think it really pumped up the whole community this year. And, and it's evident by, by seeing, and, and looking, uh, seeing and looking at the number of fans that has came out, the number of fans that's came out this year to watch uh, this scrimmage in the first scrimmage, I mean, this is almost like a, a first game, if you will, that's being played for uh, the Malakoff Tigers. So trying to get our cameraman's attention just a second here. Want to zoom in to the camera. Trying to get a, a good look at the fans for everybody at, uh, at home. So we can show you the fans that are that have made this uh, scrimmage game. Sometimes getting a, uh, getting in touch with the uh, camera person uh, proves to be a little bit more challenging than uh, other things, especially when his attention is taken by someone else. But uh, yeah, it's not like the, the beginning of the well, right before the game when we were doing all the testing. Uh, you know, there was no crowd here, no noise. Yeah. And uh, now we got uh, the crowd noise, the noise of the players on the field, cheerleaders down here, and <laughs> and the band. Uh, we did have the band over here earlier. Uh, I guess they've already gone back in now. Well, I think that uh, Coach Norris uh, just kind of welcomed everybody out. It's almost like Meet the Tigers' first scrimmage. This is a laundry. One of the, the, the scrimmages where the Tigers can, uh, where you can gain entry into the Tiger game by bringing some laundry detergent up here. That laundry detergent is being put to good use for the players' uniforms. And that's some of the things that, uh, you know, people don't account for is uh, to wash these uniforms that uh, it costs a little bit of money to do that too. It uh, does. Uh, <laughs> there's a lot, of, a lot of little expenses that's associated with uh, running the athletic program and a lot of stuff behind the scenes, you know, that need to be addressed too uh, as, as far as uh, getting funds to do those things. Exactly. And, uh, you know, these coaches put in so much work that sometime, sometimes they don't even don't even uh, uh, come home till late late at night and hardly see their family, and uh, it, it's it's kind of a sometimes thankless job if you will because they put in so many hours up here and uh, you know I think during the playoffs the coaches pretty much lived up here. Yes, that's true. Uh, I know many coaches uh, that don't come home uh, and are away from their families because they spend anywhere from, uh, you know, 12 to uh, 16 hours a day with these uh, kids. It's uh, like, their, uh, like their second home. Yeah, exactly. Trying to lift this up a little bit so we can... Uh Yeah, 
Here, let me move back here. Yeah, we're having some, <clears throat> just trying to get this uh, window <laughs> open. We've got a camera battery that's running low that we need to. Oh, there uh, we go. We got it there. <clears throat> get it yeah. plugged in. I think we're good right there. All right, now we're now we're back, folks. Sorry, again, kind of working out some of the kinks and. Uh, when you got a young man running the camera and he forgets to plug in the the battery, um, the charger to the battery. Uh, <laughs> well, I figured out <laughs> what the, I, these problems kind of get. Uh, <laughs> well, you know, this, out. this is our test run, just like it is for the Malakoff Tiger team. You know, uh, I made a stupid mistake a while ago and moved the computer and pulled the USB cable out, and we didn't have any audio. So, I mean, well, practice. folks, and, and that's the reason we didn't have any sound. It's Aaron's fault. fault. He admitted fault. it on <laughs> the air live. So that is what it was. That was me. <laughs> There's a run right there as the Tigers defense back out on the field and doing a great job. And as you said, uh, this young man uh, for Mineola is a, a good running back and one of their key running backs this year, and they keep feeding the ball. And time and time again, the Tigers keep stopping him. So great job by the Tiger defense. Side. <coughs> Again, uh, try <laughs> got some issues with the camera trying to get it plugged in, and sometimes you run into a uh, uh, situation where we have uh, a lot of devices to plug in and not enough outlets to plug into, so we may have to do a little a bit of uh buying ourselves here and get us another uh, outlet. I believe we've got it uh, fixed now. Here we go. Just a battery issue is all. But uh, glad we got the sound fixed. Aaron uh, Aaron made that mistake, so he admitted it. So uh, I admitted we'll forgive it. you, Aaron. I, I admitted it. Hey, but, but, but these weird down changes, you know, I'm over here running the scoreboard, you know, uh, second and nine, and then we're going back to – First and ten. Uh, well, that, that's it, just part of the screwing control exactly. scrimmage. If they don't get a first down, then, you know, most everybody knows that they go back. And there's a nice run after the catch right there by that uh, running back for Mineola. So, good catch and run by Mineola to get their first down. And, you know, in this scrimmage, uh, Mineola hasn't gotten very many first downs from the from the first-team offense. Oh, no. They – I'm not even sure I've uh, seen them get a first down. Maybe one uh, this entire time. Yeah, that's, that's exactly right. So we're excited again to be here tonight and to start this football season up. Uh, you can watch every game that the Tigers play this year uh, right here on the Malakoff Tiger Sports Network. And uh, we're so thrilled about being able to do this this year now. One thing that we need to explain is that you will hear, hear audio only uh, for the football games for varsity on Friday nights. Uh, but two hours after the conclusion of our game, then we are allowed to upload this into our system. And uh, it can possibly take up to 24 hours for the video to display. But the video will be there, and you can go back and watch the game in its entirety uh, right from the comfort of your own smartphone or your smart TV at home. Uh, this is a YouTube channel. And, uh, and, and to be honest with you, it's uh, a really good thing, I think. Uh, I'd like to thank Rob Hip uh, down in Georgetown, Texas, from the SHN Sports Network. Uh, he's the brainchild, him and some other guys, some big-name guys, too. Uh, uh, one of the ex-Texas, uh, Mr. Shawning, one of the ex-Texas Longhorns, uh, Radio announcers, play-by-play -play guys, is, is in the midst of uh, all of this also. So some good training provided by us, or provided by him to us. <coughs> and uh, we're anxious to uh, start the season, and and we're really excited to be a part of the SHN family. Uh, big things in store for the SHN Sports Network. Uh, you know, it was just Texas-based, originated in Georgetown, Texas, uh, but now has flourished across the nation and uh, and we're still picking up steam. 
uh, Major League Baseball Association will be able, uh, be broadcasting some uh, AAA games here pretty soon. So uh, big news, big times, and we're excited to be a part of it, folks. And uh, just uh, jump on the wagon with us and stay on this wagon because we're going to have a lot of fun for you this year and, and have a great time uh, in doing it. And uh, we'll keep you informed of everything going on. Uh, again, middle school uh, for Malakoff, all those games will be live. All the home games will be live video as it, uh, as it uh, takes place. So you'll never miss a Malakoff middle school home game because we will be here every Thursday night that the Tigers are at home and we'll be broadcasting live along with video for you. That's a special treat that we decided to do this year, uh, and it helps us out to get better and fine-tune what we're doing for Friday nights. And it gives the kiddos some exposure. And it lets the parents, grandparents, aunts and uncles, friends of the family be able to watch these young people. Because sometimes, you know, these games, junior high games, start about 4 or 5 o'clock. And people mm-hmm. don't get off to work till about 5. Mm-hmm. And the good thing about that also, too, is if they don't get off till 8 or 9 o'clock, the games are over with, then all of our games that we broadcast and televise will be archived for the future. So anybody can go back at any given time and they will be able to pull up these games uh, from our archive file, and they will be able to watch those games free of charge. Absolutely. And uh, just think about some of the kids that have parents that are in the military, you know, how great this is, you know, going to be for them. And, and, well, and you said military. We have a lot of listeners that uh, actually listen from around the country uh, that are in the military, and we'd like to say thank you to all of them and uh, appreciate your unselfish service for our country. And uh, we appreciate you listening to us when you listen to us as well. And they let us know. Uh, you know, we have a lot of uh, Malakoff alumni that follows Marcus and I, and we're, we're happy about that. And I believe I've just spotted a UFO. It's, it's been out there for a while. <laughs> that drone's been out there for a while. <laughs> well, I just saw it, so uh, I would have been dead by now. Thanks, guys, for not telling me if it was uh, aiming for my head. But uh, the drone uh, is out. Uh, I guess that's the Tiger drone. Now it's moving, so... Uh, yeah, it kind of had me a little bit confused right there, guys. I, I saw that thing, and I was like, is that a bird, or is it a plane? Uh, it's not Superman. It's too small, but uh, it is a drone. Uh, I'll tell you, that's one of the neat things about today's technology and uh, what's available to coaching staffs these days. Exactly, and I'm surprised they can keep it up this long. Uh, they've been uh, known to to run. they they got a pretty long battery life. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's been up there apparently for some time, and you guys just now making me aware of it. But, wow, uh, drones are here. <laughs> you know, we may have to invest us in a drone as well, but I don't know who would get the operator. we got our hands full now. now that but, could uh, be one of the things could be, uh, <coughs> brought, uh, you know, done from the press box. Well, you know, remote control. So. I'm not, not going to say which one, but one of our sponsors has a drone. Oh, well, <laughs> that's that's true. And, and uh, we might be able to, to get some drone coverage as well, I'm sure. It looks like there's a ambulance coming this way or somewhere. I'm not sure where they're headed to, but uh, emergency uh, personnel headed out. I'd like to thank all those first responders as well. Uh, got a message that some of those guys are listening to us. Unfortunately, they're on a call right now, so they probably had to uh, to go go on the call and not listen to us. But uh, we'd like to thank them as well for everything. And, and again, we'd like to thank all of our sponsors this year uh, for joining us and in, in, uh, making these broadcast telecasts possible. Uh, without you, this couldn't be done. Uh, we try to be the best uh, for you and, and cater to your needs. And uh, if you still want to be a part of this, we still have a couple of uh, available uh, memberships. So uh, lim- memberships right now are limited, but uh, we do have a couple available. Uh, if you would like to join us, just uh, send us a message on our Facebook page, Malakoff Tiger Sports Network. And we'd be glad to call and talk to you about our prices and uh, just how great we are, I guess. <laughs> yeah, like, you said, like you said, I mean, this is one uh, uh, cool thing that's just kind of sweeping the nation right now. And uh, it's, it's going to be great for a lot of high school uh, programs. Yeah, I, I really think so. And, and uh, you know, in the future, uh, I think that the stronghold will be lifted off of the Friday night games by the UAL. Uh, and that's what I'm hoping, that these games can be uh, telecasted in small areas like this because of the fact that, you know, some of our people that are elderly, grandmas, grandpas, aunts, uncles, like I said before, can't make it to the games. So, so let the games be broadcasted. Let them be telecasted. 
and uh, let those folks be able to see it. Uh, it's a service that we're providing now that I absolutely love, and I, I think that uh, it will just get even better with time. And uh, I'm proud to be able to do this this year with you guys. I really am. And and uh, missing old Marcus tonight. Again, Marcus is uh, – in a family reunion up in Fort Worth, and we miss him tonight. But uh, he'll be back soon enough. That first game in TIG, we'll, we'll be together. All of us will be together, probably be out in the bleachers and uh, be burning up out there for that first <laughs> game. But, uh, hey, that's the way it is sometimes when you broadcast high school football. You never know when you're going to end up. Speaking of football, there's uh, Coach uh, Poteet right there, the Trinity Valley Cardinals. And uh, they were in action last night here uh, at Tiger Field. And uh, had a pretty uh, successful first outing, I must say, as well. I kept tabs on it via Benny Rogers last night. So had a lot that we still had to do last night, so I couldn't make it up here. We were writing commercials, performing commercials. Uh, oh, yeah. I mean, there's a lot that goes into these broadcasts. This last week has been crazy. Yeah, a lot of people don't see that. But, uh, you know, we're, we're writing commercials, and then we got to produce them, voice them, and then you got to put music beds in. It's a lot of stuff to do, but, uh, you know, we got it done. So I'm happy about that. Getting back to the, the field of action down here, Mineola hasn't done a whole lot against this Tiger defense. They've been trying to, but uh, this Tiger defense has stiffened up and not letting uh, Mineola uh, gain very many yards here, which is a positive sign. And I, I think this is probably the twos, even threes, out here for the Tigers. There's a pass up in the air. There was a push off on the play and uh, by the offensive uh, player, and I don't believe that was called, but the offensive receiver pushed the uh, Malakoff defender in the back. Uh, ball was thrown up, uh, just up for grabs, and the mini old defender was able to uh, – mini old offensive player was able to come down with that ball after the push in the back there. <laughs> yeah, it probably should have been called, but, you know, like – I'm sure during the season that they would probably get that. It's kind of like our uh, our, our uh, audio a while ago. It exactly. went out, and, you know, their, uh, their uh, brain probably didn't send a message to the arm to pick the flag up out of the pocket and throw it on the field. But will they admit, <laughs> it, admit it like uh, Aaron did? <laughs> well, you know, uh, you know, being a, being a part of a, a former officiating crew, I can say that one thing that, you know, uh, that was always done, uh, we had a, a pregame meeting to talk about things, and then we had a postgame meeting to talk about things. And, uh, you know, there was a lot of, uh, of self-guilt, I, I guess you could say, and say, hey, you know, I blew that call, I missed it. Uh, but the, the key is right there, you're not going to see everything. And um, it, it's just like these kids. You get better with every game that you're uh, officiating, and, and, you're, and your vision gets better because basically it's your vision – you have to learn not to watch the game and watch the spot you're supposed to officiate because that's that's a problem with a lot of athletes is you you get uh, you get caught up. Mm-hmm. Um, speaking of caught up, we're gonna uh, have have a word from some of our great sponsors here, folks. You're listening to the Malakoff Tiger Sports Network on SHN Sports. We'll be right back. Hey sports fans, are you game time ready? At Rock and R T-Shirt Factory, they are always ready to meet your sports apparel needs. Kenny and Robin are a hometown, family-owned business in Malakoff, Texas that offers custom embroidery, screen-printed T-shirts, hats, visors, and so much more. Whether you're getting ready for that big Tiger game, pool tournament, or just needing shirts for your next family reunion or your school function, come on down to the Rock and R T-Shirt Factory and let Kenny and Robin meet all your needs. We are your one and only T-Shirt Factory and apparel store in Malakoff. The Rockin' R T-Shirt Factory is located at 111 South Terry Street in downtown Malakoff. The number that you can reach Robin and Kenny at is 903-676-8976 or 903-676-8977. The Rockin' R T-Shirt Factory is the official apparel store for the Malakoff Tiger Sports Network. Good luck this year, Tigers. This portion of tonight's Malakoff Tiger Sporting Event is being brought to you in part by Sig Peach Insurance of Malakoff, Texas. Sig Peach Insurance is a family independently owned business that has multiple carriers to choose from. Letty Myers and Sig Peach will find the right solution for all of your insurance needs such as auto, boat, motorcycle, umbrella, life, collector car, flood, pet health, renters, ATV, power sports, recreational vehicle, disability, and health insurance. What are you waiting for? Call or go by the office today for your savings quote so you can enjoy more of your money tomorrow. Remember, Sig Peach is for you. Sig Peach Insurance is located at 214 North Terry Street, Suite A in Malakoff, Texas. The phone number for Sig Peach Insurance is 903 6 7771 You can also email Carrie at carrie.peach at sig number four u.com or go to their website at www.sig number four u.com. 
It's football season. And All right, folks, welcome back to the Malakoff Tiger Sports Network on SHN Sports. I'm Joey Snowden along with uh, Mr. Stephen Ferris today. And uh, Mr. Marcus Tal, the Hall of Famer, he is uh, out and about at a family reunion today in Fort Worth, Texas. And he will join us the first game of the season. Saw Malakoff just score on another long run right there, Stephen, on the JV side of things. And uh, that brings that uh, controlled scrimmage to 2-0 to zero, uh, if you're keeping track for the JV Tigers. Yeah, and, that was a, he, he made a good play, on good run on that. He had the stiff arm that opened that uh, sideline up for him, and he just uh, turned on the speed. Well, I tell you what, I'd like to get a name on that young man because he, he is running tough tonight. He's uh, he's had a lot of rushing yards. matter of fact, he's probably got over 100 rushing yards tonight. Right. That's not his only big play he's had. Uh, he had another one that he broke down here uh, that got the uh, Tigers within scoring striking distance. So, so basically you've got uh, three or four running backs on varsity that can go the distance at any time. <clears throat> and if you happen to lose two or three of those, you can bring up one from the JV and he doesn't miss a beat. That's right. And that's what you want, too, uh, to have that depth throughout the season. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you always want depth, and that's what we were talking about. If, if you get it into the playoffs, you can bring some of these young men up, or even before that, give them some game time experience and, uh, you know, get their feet wet, so to speak, before they get into the playoffs, and that would be uh, really great. But, you know, first of all, Tigers have to get to the playoffs. There's another run right there by the Tigers. Still nice run. Feet. And just bulldozing <laughs> over many other defenders for the first down or close to it. Don't know who that young man is, but I tell you what, love the way he ran that ball that time. Yes, just like a, he was pretty bullish right there. Well, I tell you what, very impressed with this little JV group right here, guys. Uh, they have really put on a show tonight, and they've come out and they've hit hard. Uh, and they have uh, driven their feet when they had the ball in their hand to gain extra yardage. They've caught passes they they've did just about everything probably asked of them to do by the coaches and i've seen very few mistakes made so far uh, by this jv group so very very impressed and this is all a part of jamie driscoll's program by the way it's not something that just uh you know they thought up last night these these young men are a part of coach driscoll and, and his coaching staff's program and they have built I'm going to say a dynasty, you know. You know, yeah, this absolutely. is the 11th year for Coach Jamie Driscoll. He has 99 wins. Uh, he's one win shy away of the 100th uh, win for his career. And that's almost incredible. I mean, that is incredible. It, it puts him in the category with one of the greatest coaches. And, uh, you know, he's on, on the potential to be one of the greatest coaches in high school football right here in Malakoff, Texas. Yeah. If you would told me that back in 1985, 1986, and uh, – Man, I tell you, I wouldn't have believed you. <laughs> now, Joey, when you played uh, over here, did y'all play where the uh, old stone walls Well, we, were, we, we, we played at the old football field, uh, and uh, that was uh, – I, I love that field, by the way. That was uh, a field that we played on as kids, and I remember on Sundays we'd go out there and all the big guys like Benny Rogers would quarterback, and uh, you'd have just about all the neighborhood kids and even kids from, from other places to come – you know, play on that football field, and we'd play pickup games of football. And, you know, back then we didn't have the pads on on Sundays, but we tackled. And uh, that, that kind of helped make a lot of us tough right there. And you left yes. a lot of times with busted lips and bloody noses. And uh, sometimes, you know, Benny Rogers would leave an imprint of a football on your chest from throwing it so hard it, because you didn't know how to catch it. And But uh, fun times back then. We played there, but we also uh, christened the new field here in – and it was kind of special because my first broadcast, uh, we were on the new field. We, we were at this game in new field, and we also uh, played on this field uh, the first time that uh, the field was ready to play on. So it's kind of a special moment for me in Tiger history uh, to be able to play on the field before this one, uh, when the stadium was the original, was first originally built, and then to be able to broadcast it later on uh, it, and when they had the turf field put down is just quite special. Yeah, it's got to be a good feeling, uh, especially being an alumni of the program and being able to do what, what you've been able to do the past few years. And, uh, you know, it, it just shows uh, how much love you got for the um, history of this Malakoff uh, football program and sports uh, in general, too. Uh, well, I, I tell you, you know, Marcus and I do this because we love it. Um, we love the kids. We love the community. We love our hometown. 
And uh, this is just a passion for us. This is our therapy. This is our what we call our Friday night therapy. And, uh, you know, there's no place better to be uh, in Texas on a Friday night than in a high school football field. And uh, we just love what we do. We love being able to get out here and do it. Um, and it, it, it's, it's kind of us giving back as well, uh, giving back to people who are, are not fortunate enough to be here at the game for whatever not reason. And uh, we, we love and enjoy that too. We, we get stopped on the streets sometimes and, hey, man, we listen to you guys. Or, sir, we listen to you guys all the time. Y'all do a great job. Or, hey, guys, you know, uh, love you guys. I'm not from Malakoff. I hate Malakoff, but y'all do a great job, or whatever it may be. But, <laughs> You know, we, we love that. Um, we love being a part of something that uh, that means a lot to people. Um, you know, we're not going to get rich doing this, and, and, and we're never going to be rich doing this. But, uh, you know, being able to do something that's uh, a help to the community really uh, kind of makes our day and, and also puts the kids on a huge platform, a national platform, where they can be recognized. And, and that's the whole thing. You know, back in the 80s and 90s, you know, that platform wasn't there. No. You were not able to uh, let schools see you like you can now. And uh, part of our service that we provide lets the whole world see these kids play football. And uh, who knows, they can be discovered uh, where they wouldn't be discovered if we wasn't doing it. And uh, that's kind of the why we wanted to do this. We wanted to let the kids be discovered. And not only that, you know, we want to we want to focus on the band, the cheerleaders, uh, the high school principal and, and the, the superintendents and, and everybody. I mean, they do a great job. Malakoff has made such a vast improvement. Mr. Randy Perry was here. He had this place running just like a top-notch machine. It was finally old, you know. Uh, mm-hmm. He retired, and we have a new print, uh, new administrator now. But, uh, you know, Mr. Perry was, was responsible for, for a lot of this happening. And uh, he did a great job uh, with the Malakoff ISD school district. You know, Ronnie Snow was a... Tell you what, won awards at the elementary school nationally, claimed awards for 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 school, and it, man, it's just a fun time to be a Malakoff Tiger. And uh, you know, if you're thinking about you know your child's at a big school and you want to go to a small school, Malakoff is the place to be, in my opinion. This is the place to be, absolutely. And another thing, uh, you know, this is a. Uh, I'm sure the kids uh, really get a, a kick out of it, like you said. But, you know, the smaller schools, like, uh, like you pointed on earlier, never have really gotten the exposure that they need to, uh, especially with a lot of their programs, a lot of their athletes. Uh, this, this gives them certainly a huge opportunity to sure put themselves out there yeah, it, and it, to be noticed, you know, not only statewide, but nationwide. Yeah, and, and, you know, listen, not everybody's going to play for University of Texas or, or Baylor University or TCU. They're going to play for, for maybe a different program, maybe a junior college, maybe right down the road at Trinity Valley, maybe at Navarro down the road, maybe at Tyler. But, you know, somewhere, you know, they're going to play. They could play. And uh, our, our goal is to use this platform to help them out possibly. Uh, speaking of, of somebody from a small school, I, I want to give my condolences uh, to the Jenkins family and the Dawson family. Uh, Desmond Jenkins passed away uh, suddenly uh, the other night, and our thoughts and prayers are with those, uh, with the family members of Mr. Jenkins and company. Great guy, and uh, you know he'll be uh, greatly missed in that Trinidad community. Uh, but uh, he's he's one of the success stories that come out of Trinidad, Texas. Played uh, football at Baylor. Went to law school and, and uh, was uh, became an attorney and uh, tell you what, just did a lot of great things. And, you know, not only that, but uh, a lot of the kids, younger kids at Trinidad looked up to him as well. So he'll be greatly missed. And our thoughts and uh, prayers go out to the family uh, of Desmond Jenkins. So, uh, you know, just anywhere you go, uh, anywhere we go, and this isn't going to be the only sport either, uh, Stephen and, and Aaron, this will be – this is the start of many. Uh, we plan on doing some volleyball games. Uh, we plan on doing basketball, boys and girls, softball, girls and baseball boys. So it's going to give all these athletes that play different sports a chance to showcase their skills. And uh, we're so happy to be a part of this in the SHN Sports family uh, for allowing us to, uh, to be a part of this. And you know, it also opens up doors for us to do maybe other schools down the road. Uh, you know, some of the plans that I've been working on, I've shared with Aaron and Marcus and, and even you, 
that, uh, you know, it would be great to have another crew next year to go cover another school. Right. And, uh, you know, and, and wouldn't it be great if you had a, a giant platform at every school around to be able to do something like this and, and give the kids the coverage that they deserve? Uh, I think that would be wonderful. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It would be a fantastic thing. Uh, that's one thing I like about this uh, this setup is it not only uh, covers football, but you, you also have the opportunity to uh, showcase those kids in some of the other sports uh, throughout the school year. Well, I just learned that 22 was actually R.J. Carr, uh, and it wasn't Dedrick Davis. I know Dedrick Davis is out there. I just don't know what number he's in. He, if I would be a betting man, he would be probably out there right now uh, in the backfield. So I think he is 21, but 22 is R.J. Carr. And uh, R.J. Carr is, is something special. I, I tell you, since we've been watching him since our freshman year. And, and uh, that young man right there just keeps on running, too. There's flag down in the backfield. It's probably going to be a holding, usually in the area of holding, but a nice run for a first down. Actually, about a 16-yard pickup on the play. That'll be negated by the, uh, the holding call right there. So there's a, a miscue right there on uh, one of the linemen or one of the receivers. So hadn't seen too many uh, yellow hankies come out. No, no, so surprisingly. It, it, it's been a, a very uh, clean scrimmage. We've had a couple of confrontations between uh, these rival teams here, but uh, nothing out of the ordinary no, for a that, scrimmage game. That was early on, and you expect that early on, but by the by the time we get to this point in the scrimmages, they pretty much got that out of their system. <laughs> There's a nice pass downfield, darted in on the 40, and a young man uh, caught the ball and, and tried to elude some of the downfield tackles and actually lost two yards by circling back. And that's something I'm sure that uh, Coach Driscoll and company would say, young man, when you get the ball, always move north and south. Uh, you get the ball, you need, to be, you need to be going north more than south. <laughs> you, can, you can run a long way east and west and not go anywhere. Oh, listen, I, I've seen it. There's some kids that could have been, uh, you know, have 100-yard games running uh, 65 this way and 65 that way. Yes. But uh, that way would be uh, across the field and not down the field. That's so. true. <laughs> Tigers come out in uh, two wide receivers set to the left, two to the right. It's a loss of or gain of one, and it's going to be another handoff, and oh, my. Running back right then was stoned at the line of scrimmage. Matter of fact, one yard loss on the play. And uh, that young man came in from the left side and he shot through there like a cannon to make that tackle on the running back for the Tigers. And yeah, what uh, was a third down and one, actually they're gonna move him back uh, two yards on the play. So loss of two down will be third down and three for the Tigers. Oh, wow. I thought, I thought he at least lost one yard. But. Well, yeah, and, and that's another, you know, judgment call right there. Uh, right. Whenever the defenders uh, meets up with the running back in the hole, it's usually where momentum stopped at. There's the quick pass out to the left. It's caught. And uh, a nice little run to get the first down across the 40-yard line to the – about the 41-yard line, depending on the spot. So a great uh, quick pass right there, and that young man zipping it out from the left side. That's enough um, yardage for the first down. Yeah, it's going to be Nathan Jones at quarterback for the Tigers, number four. And uh, we saw Nathan playing baseball for the Tigers, and uh, we know he has a lively arm, and uh, that time it uh, got up on the receiver real quick, guys. So Jones looks like to be one of the backup quarterbacks. There's a handoff to number 22, and that's uh, R.J. Carr. And uh, Carr is uh, moving the pile forward in a positive direction, and that's what you get when R.J. Carr moves those legs and uh, has a full steam ahead of speed right there, or a full steam, <laughs> full head of steam, full I head should of steam. say. <laughs> a little tongue uh, twister right there early in preseason for me. No, I think the drones got shook up there. It's not it, switch, it, well, yeah, switch it, positions. Yeah, it, it's, it's now <laughs> catching me in my right eye. It was in my left eye, and these things are going to have to stop. Uh, <laughs> getting the uh, Area 51 flashbacks and things here. Well, just be glad there's only one and not more than two. <laughs> Jones's pass out into the left sideline is caught incomplete and then dropped. But I think it's going to be fumbled out of bounds, I believe. It's going to be a catch. And let's see what they do right here. 
They are going to say it's a catch, and it was fumbled. It was knocked out of his hands by a defender. And so they will give him the yardage on the catch. But uh, Jones, very impressive back there, throwing that ball with authority uh, from the quarterback position for the Tigers. Uh, looking very solid back there. Absolutely. Uh, he's hit his uh, last couple of receivers uh, with a good, solid authority there on his passes. A little pistol formation here for the Tigers. Going to be a handoff to 22. And uh, that time, uh, the blocking breaks down up front for a big loss. And uh, Mineola is able to bottle up R.J. Carr there on that run. And it's going to be a loss of four yards on that play. Uh, but uh, let's see what happens right here. I think they'll move the ball back to the 30-yard line, I believe, and start over here. Let's see what happens. It's always uh, – we're, we're trying to figure out what's happening always up here on scrimmages because there's no running clock. And we have no idea what the coaches are talking about. Let's run five more of this and five more of that. And uh, well, we'll see here. Looks like they're going to mark the ball on the 30-yard line. The Tigers will come back and uh, reset the downs. And you know you got the coaches, uh, you know, hitting up the other coach. Hey, coach, uh, can we run five more of these plays? Oh, sure. Yeah. That it doesn't happens all the time. <laughs> and I mean, that happened back when we played. You know, it, let's run. Let's. I tell you what, we'll run five more. You guys run five more. That's usually how it goes. So these guys have to be uh, get kind of gassed right now, though. They've been out there on the field for quite a while now. We're reaching the uh, one hour and 41 minute mark of the scrimmage. Yes, sir. Almost two hours now. So Tigers will have the ball. Single back in the backfield. Two wide receivers left, two to the right. There's the snap. Jones back to pass. Looks to his right. Under duress. Throws down field. And a uh, little bit uh, behind the intended receiver, the number 11 there. He did get some pretty good, pretty decent uh, pressure there by the uh, – uh, Defenders, many old defenders there. Yeah, and I think he put too, a little bit too much zip on that ball. Yeah. Good, good pass, I think. Uh, yeah. Uh, to, uh, just put a little bit too much zip and, and threw uh, behind the offensive wide receiver right there. Uh, we got a second down now. and uh... <clears throat> There's a snap from Jones. Going to be a handoff and a nice run developing right here. Close to the 40-yard line. I'll bring up third down, and we'll call it one to go here from the booth. So a nice little run that time by the Tigers. Again, another uh, number back there in the backfield. Running the, touching the ball for the Tigers. Looks like number 12. Yeah, that's right. Uh, <laughs> where they keep bringing these guys in? <laughs> I, I tell you, there's a there's a plethora of running backs that the Tigers have, and and uh, you know the main, like I said, the main thing is is keep everybody healthy. But right now, keep them hydrated because it's hot out there. Drink plenty of water, maybe even some pickle juice. Two wide receivers left, one to the right, one back in the backfield. There's going to be a handoff again. Looks like R.J. Carr, and Carr is upended, close to first down yardage. And uh, that was a very, very nice defensive play right there good from open. the Minneola defender. Yeah, well, good open field tackle there. Yeah, you don't see many defenders that make that great of a play on R.J. Carr in open field without him giving the stiff arm or shoving somebody down in the turf. It looks like we – Yeah, they're going to move it back there. They didn't get uh, a first down, so they're going to move it back to the 30 again. So, Minneola defense kind of toughening up right here and limited in the Tigers – on the offensive side of things, again, this is the twos and some of the threes mixed in on the offense now for the varsity. Jones rolls to his left, looks downfield, throws downfield, mm. and the intended receiver ran before he had the ball. Uh, <laughs> young man, you got to catch that ball, then run. Uh, just a, a young mistake right there made, and he'll, uh, he'll learn from that one. But uh, the ball was thrown right in his hands. And uh, I think he was just trying to run before he had the ball on that one, Stephen. Right, right. Uh, he's looking uh, to dart down that sideline is what he's wanting to do. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, the drone's moved again. Now it's to the left. <laughs> <laughs> Tell you what, I need to find out what kind of battery they're using in that drone. It's been up there for a while. 
Drawing to the left and the sun uh, is kind of partially back to our southwest here, slowly going down. <laughs> very impressive, very impressive. Got the lights coming on. Looks we like we have a different. Now it's still Jones in at quarterback. It's going to be the uh, jet sweeper on the left side. That's going to go for a first down for Malikoff. Well, they're going to mark him a little bit shy, it looks like. I'm just going to wait till the official gets there from now. And what I see and what they see is two different things. And mine may be due to age. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I will join you on that. Third down and probably a foot to go, if that, for the Tigers. Let me see where the ball is spotted. Well, it's spotted on the 39, so it's going to be a true yard. Three wide receivers to the right, one to the left, one back in the backfield for Malikoff. Nathan Jones is the quarterback. Snap, Jones rolling to his right. Throws to his right. Pass is caught and completed. And uh, they're, they're going to call him down. Yeah, that's a good call right yeah. there, too, because he did catch the ball and then hit a knee right there. Uh, he, he thought he was in the NFL. He's going to take off and run until someone touched him. Good job, though. Because what if the uh, official didn't see that and the young man's got sense enough to get up there and, and run to the end zone? That could have been a touchdown. So great job and great field awareness right there by the young man that caught that ball. And a great pass. You know, rolling away from uh, from the left side, which he's a left-handed passer, rolling to the right side, throwing against what I like to call the grain, on, you know, from the left side. That was a great uh, throw by Nathan Jones right there. And uh, being a fellow left-hander, I can tell you that is uh, not an easy throw to make. No, it's not. It looks like we're having some uh, some discussion on the field of maybe what's to come next, maybe a, a time portion of the scrimmage coming up and uh, what we're going to do right now is take a little break folks you're listening to the malakoff tiger sports network on shn sports it's football season in Texas, and everyone loves a cold or dub beverage. Don't be the one that gets arrested for a DWI, or even worse, cause an accident due to irresponsible drinking. If you consume alcoholic beverages, be a responsible drinker and have a designated driver. It could save not only your life, but someone else's as well. It's simple. Drink and drive and go to jail. Don't drink and drive. This message has been brought to you by Athens and Turner Record Companies. Turner Records and Malakoff and Athens Record of Athens wish the Malakoff Tigers and Lady Tigers a successful sports year. Hey, it's that time of the year where you don't want those special moments to be forgotten about. Wesley Jones, owner of Thunderbridge Photography, can bring those magical moments to life and you can have a live time of memories frozen in time. Wesley specializes in detailed, artistic, and dramatic portraiture such as sports photography, singer portraits, and glamour shots. With Thunderbridge Photography, Wesley works with his clients to come up with a creative and original concept that translates into one-of-a-kind images. Wesley is currently booking singers for the 2020 year. Wesley is just a phone call away and can be reached at 903-368-1668 or email Wesley at wesleyjpaint at gmail.com. Thunderbridge Photography can also be found on Facebook or the internet at www.thunderbridgephotography.com. Wesley Jones at Thunderbridge Photography is the official photographer for the Malakoff Tiger Sports Network. Go Tigers! The Malakoff Tigers Sports Network would like to thank Brookshire's and Malakoff for the catering of our press box tonight. Brookshire's will cater all home games this year, and we are proud of our hometown grocery store for the continuous support of Malakoff ISD Athletics. Thank you, Brookshire's, for being a sponsor of Malakoff Tigers Sports Network. You're going to love our food. This is Bubba Gene inviting you to our new location serving the best food in East Texas. My son and I have our seafood buffet every Friday and Saturday night or Saturday evening. We also open at 7 o'clock in the morning for breakfast just to serve you. Our lunches will start at $8.95, including different menus every day. Our hand-cut steaks include sirloin, ribeyes, T-bones, and we prepare them for you daily. I'm telling you right now, you're going to love our food. Bubba's Place is located at the Double D Steakhouse, Highway 31 West in Currens, Texas. <laughs> Let's face it, we live in a fast-paced world with little time to get many things done that in a perfect world we could do with relative ease ourselves. With David Kennedy's red carpet treatment, let David do things that you don't have time to do or just don't want to tackle yourself. David has his three-room carpet cleaning special for just $125. That's what I'd pay the chiropractor after doing that. Save money, time, and your back. Let the carpet pro get her done for you. Did we mention that David won best carpet cleaning business on Cedar Creek Lake in 2017 and 2019? Well, he just did. Kennedy's red carpet treatment specializes in 
24 hour water extraction and rapid structure dry out tile, grout, VCT tile, area rugs, upholstery, carpet cleaning, air duct cleaning, and odor elimination. The Balakoff Tigers Sports Network endorses David's work. The phone number that you can reach David at is 903 802 0218. You can also send David an email at Kennedy's Red Carpet at gmail.com. David is also on Facebook. Just give him a shout for the best of the best service. David would like to wish his daughter Alec and son Carter a great year this year at Malakoff Middle School. Alec is a 7th grade MMS cheerleader and Carter is on the 8th grade football team. We would like to thank David for his support of the Malakoff Tigers Sports Network. Go Tigers! This portion of tonight's Malakoff Tiger football game is being brought to you in part by CC's Unisex Hair Shop. CC's Unisex Hair Shop is located at 604 West Corsicana Street in Athens, Texas. The phone number you can reach Cynthia or Cecil at CC's is 903-477-1553 or 903-675-2688. CC's takes walk-ins and appointments. CC's, we're looking good, is understood. This portion of tonight's Malakoff Tiger football coverage is being brought to you in part by Coach Pontoons. Coach Pontoons manufactures standard and custom pontoon barges equipped with Honda outboard motors. The website for Coach Pontoons is www.coachpontoons.com. And they can be found on Facebook by searching Coach Pontoons. Hey, Kenny, you wouldn't believe how much faster my internet is now since you put that tower up for me and we got the internet dish up at the top. Oh, yeah, having your antenna higher makes all the difference. Does that also work with, like, cell phone boosters and TV antennas? Because out here in the sticks, a lot of us are, like, down in a low place. Oh, yeah, having a tower in a rural area makes all the difference, Aaron. Not only is the tower good for internet, it's also good for cell phone booster, TV antenna, or even amateur radio. Hey, Kenny, why don't you tell the people a little bit about your business. Oh, certainly, Aaron. I'd be glad to. You know, East Texas Towers is one of the nation's leading internet tower sales and installation companies. For nearly 10 years, our family-owned and operated business has been providing residential and commercial customers with the highest quality customer service and support in the industry. You can call me at 972-900-5108 or check us out on the web at www.easttexastowers.com. Now, let's get that TV antenna up so you can start watching TV. Sounds good. East Texas Towers proudly supports the Malakoff Tiger Sports Network and wishes good luck to the Malakoff Tigers this season. Established in 1966, Hearn Surveying Associates LLC is a family-owned and operated professional land surveying firm located in Athens, Texas. Mark Book Farrell is carrying on the family tradition as the owner of Hearn Surveying. HSA is licensed, experienced, and equipped to meet a plethora of surveying needs. Typical projects include title surveys, topography surveys, commercial construction projects, energy-related jobs, land development, and boundary locations. Most importantly, Hearn Surveying stands ready to respond to your surveying needs in the changing landscape of the real estate market. For all of your surveying needs, call Hearn Surveying and Associates LLC at 903-675-2858. That's 903-675-2858. Or visit their office located at 108 West Tyler Street in Athens, Texas. Hearn Surveying Associates wishes the Malakoff Tigers good luck this season. A home is not a home because of the room dimensions or the color of the walls. It's about how you feel when you walk through the front door. It's the vision you have along with the warm feelings in your heart when you realize that this is where God wants you to be. Your experience is more than real estate with me. It's about your life and dreams. At Keller Williams, independent agent Dennis Fires takes the approach of your home buying choice and dreams to heart. Dennis is a small town guy with a servant's heart. With Dennis Flowers as your next realtor, Dennis will listen to your wants, needs, and dreams and find solutions tailored to you by using all the latest technology market research, and business strategies to exceed your expectations. If you're looking for an honest, hardworking realtor, then choose Malakoff's own Dennis Flowers, an independent agent of Keller Williams. Dennis proudly supports the Malakoff Tigers and Letty Tigers and wants to wish them good luck this sports year. You can call Dennis at 972-938-2222 or 214-980-3906. That's 972-938-2222 or 214-980-3906. Or email Dennis at teamflowers at kw.com. Dennis can also be found on Facebook and Twitter. Do you need-
need to replace a roof, build a deck, or replace those old floors you've been wanting to do, but time is your worst enemy? Well, wait no longer. Huff Daddy Construction LLC has you covered, and they are your one stop for all your residential construction needs around Cedar Creek Lake, Lake Palestine, Richland Chambers, Navarra Mills, and Lake Livingston. Huff Daddy covers all Central and East Texas Lake areas and more. At Huff Daddy Construction LLC, we pride our company on reliability, great communication, integrity, and quality work that's backed by a guarantee that we stand by. We strongly believe in giving our absolute best in all of our projects, no matter how big or small. We are the experts in our trade, and we will always keep you educated on your particular task or project. We do all residential construction and projects so that you don't have to. With affordable prices, what are you waiting for? We look forward to earning your business. Remember, there's no job too big or too small. We do them all. Some of our services are additions, remodeling, bathroom remodeling, kitchen remodel, porch build, or replace. Window replacements, wood decks to top it off, and we specialize in roofing and tile floors. You can call Matt Tenney today at 281-254-9494. That's 281-254-9494. Or call Mr. Anthony Reesner at 949-275-8564. That's 949-275-8564 for your free bid today. Are you closer to 50 than you are to 30? Now you can get back to that 30-year-old body and you don't have to wait any longer. The brand new state-of-the-art MTX Fitness Center is right here in good old Malakoff, Texas. At MTX Fitness Center, we have a wide variety of equipment for beginners or the avid weight lifters. We also have a cardio room with availability for daily workouts. They said if you build it, they will come. Well, folks, Brandon Phillips and family built it and now it's your turn to come on in and get signed up to work on improving your overall health and dropping those unwanted pants sizes. No more driving to other cities to work out. You save money, time, and gas. Our prices here at the MTX Fitness Center is just $39.99 a month with a one-time enrollment fee of just $19.99. What a deal, right? We've got another deal for you also. We offer discounted rates for military, fire department, law enforcement, teachers, and senior citizens. Go on by and see them at 414 West Royal Boulevard. They're right next door to the Sonic. Or you can call MTX Fitness at 903-880-880. 2172. Again, that is 903-880-2172. Go Tigers! Child care is something in these times that we all need. Peace of mind while your work is something that we all need. At Noah's Ark Christian Academy, you will get the very best of child care and peace of mind. Tina Crawford and her staff run a top-notch daycare where every child is treated like her own. Your children will be engaged, entertained, fed, kept clean, and learn how to play with others while following a well-established schedule. Established in 2011 by Tina, Noah's Ark provides care for children from 6 weeks to 12 years of age. Their program is based on the Avica curriculum for the ages of 18 months to pre-K. They strive to give the best education, care, and love to all children and parents who enter their doors. Speaking of doors, you can rest assured that Tina runs a very secure daycare where visitors will be verified before entrance to the building can be gained. What are you waiting for? Peace of mind is just a phone call away or visit for your child care needs with Noah's Ark Christian Academy. Noah's Ark Christian Academy is located at 1312 East Royal Boulevard in Malakoff, Texas. The phone number for Noah's Ark is 903-489-2100. Business hours are Monday through Friday, 6.30 a.m. to 6.30 p.m. Noah's Ark can also be found on Facebook. Joy. Tina and her staff are huge supporters of the children at Malakoff ISD. You know why? No, Marcus. Tell us why. Well, it's because a lot of them came through her daycare. Tina and all her staff would like to wish the Malakoff Tigers and Lady Tigers good luck this school year. Hey sports fans, are you game time ready? At Rockin' R T-Shirt Factory, they are always ready to meet your sports apparel needs. Kenny and Robin are a hometown, family-owned business in Malakoff, Texas that offers custom embroidery, screen-printed T-shirts, hats, visors, and so much more. Whether you're getting ready for that big Tiger game, pool tournament, or just needing shirts for your next family reunion or your school function, come on down to the Rockin' R T-Shirt Factory and let Kenny and Robin meet all your needs. We are your one and only T-Shirt Factory and apparel store in Malakoff. The Rockin' R T-Shirt Factory is located at 111 South Terry Street in downtown Malakoff. The number that you can reach Robin and Kenny at is 903-676-8976 or 903-676-8977. The Rockin' R T-Shirt Factory is the official apparel store for the Malakoff Tiger Sports Network. Good luck this year, Tigers. This portion of tonight's Malakoff Tigers sporting event is being brought to you in part by Sig Peach Insurance of Malakoff, Texas. Sig Peach Insurance is a family, independently owned business that has multiple carriers to choose from. Letty Myers and Sig Peach will find the right solution for all of your insurance needs, such as auto, boat, motorcycle, umbrella, life, collector car, flood, pet health, renters, ATV, power sports, recreational vehicle, disability, and health insurance. What are you waiting for? Call or go by the office today for your savings quote so you can enjoy more of your money tomorrow. Remember, Sig Peach is for you. 
you. Sig Peach Insurance is located at 214 North Terry Street, Suite A in Malakoff, Texas. The phone number for Sig Peach Insurance is 903-675-7771. 903-675-7771. You can also email Carrie at carrie.peach at sig4u.com or go to their website at www.sig4u.com. All right, welcome back, everybody. You're listening and watching the MTSN, Malakoff Tiger Sports Network, on SHN Sports. And uh, thrilled to be here tonight. Uh, Again, we're we're, uh, right along with the Tigers here in preseason and uh, letting you get a glimpse, your first glimpse of Tiger football for the year. Uh, Excited to be here. Uh, Missing our compadre, Mr. Marcus Dow, the Hall of Famer. And uh, tonight I'm joined by Mr. Aaron Scott and Stephen Ferris in the booth, and Jonathan Snowden is our cameraman. So uh, special thanks to you guys. Aaron is producing everything and and helping us out with that. Uh, so guys like me and Stephen can just do our job and talk and give you stats and so forth. So uh, we appreciate it. You know we're going to have uh, pretty much a a big uh, big crew. We're going to have a statistician, cameraman. Uh, sound and audio uh, person, and uh, Marcus and I will do your play-by-play and color commentary. So, looks focused like in the, on the cheerleaders there, it looks like. So, the cameraman's – you know, I'm amazed that this is the first scrimmage, and look at the stands. I mean, we have a lot of people from the community that has came out to actually watch this first scrimmage game in the, in the heat. So, kudos to the Malakoff Tiger fans uh, for coming out and getting the first glimpse along with us. Uh, for tonight's uh, scrimmage game against the Mini Yellow Jackets. Sh- and in that last shot, you could actually see someone over there by a truck <laughs> watching from the road. Yeah, I tell you, very impressed with this little bitty camera that we have, this little cannon. It uh, uh, produces crystal clear uh, video. I'm just amazed by it. So we're, we're very happy to, to have all this equipment. And uh, I'd like to thank uh, Dennis Flowers Realty, uh, Mr. Dennis Flowers, Malakoff alumni, uh, our first gold package sponsor. And and if it wasn't for Dennis, you know, we, we wouldn't have some of this stuff that we have right now. But he has uh, stepped up to the mic and one of our one of our big sponsors this year. And I'd like to say thank you. And, and like to say thank you to all of our sponsors because, man, uh, without you guys, uh, this couldn't be possible. So thank you so much for being with the Malakoff Tiger Sports Network this year and, and uh, you know, riding the, riding, the, riding the ship with us. The uh, – Varsity is back on the field to play. Mineola will run offense now with the Tiger Varsity. Looks like the twos will be on defense. And, my goodness, what a hit (laughs) right there in the backfield. Quarterback sack, and that's going to be a a loss of about nine yards on the play right there. You talk about uh, the old cliche, a deer caught in the headlights. He he was. Got a picture of our drone flying around there. There's There's a shot of the Malakoff High School drone. And uh, that's that's pretty cool stuff right there. That's a pretty clear picture there. Uh, you know, definitely could tell it's not a UFO. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, and now maybe he can get back to the game uh, instead of the UFO. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you get him on the camera right there. He gets mesmerized with uh, with the technology, and he'll start to focus his attention on the on the drone all night. <laughs> but uh, yeah, just kind of slap him in the back of the head, and <laughs> he straightens up. <laughs> well, it did have a kind of a nice little Christmassy red light on it. So it did, it did, I, and, and like you, I'm amazed because it is really kind of far out, and uh, that camera zooms in. I, I feel like I'm a part of the NFL Network or something. Uh, this is just amazing stuff right here. All we need now is uh, in in a uh, helmet uh, microphones. A, <laughs> yeah, there's a nice run right there by Miniola. And a gain of about 10 yards on that run. Still five yards shy of the necessary first down to gain for the Yellow Jackets. But uh, one of their biggest runs of the night right there, biggest plays too. So, like I said, this uh, Tiger defense has looked very good at times tonight. And uh, I'm sure they're going to look a lot better once this, we get deeper into the season here. Oh, yeah. N- nothing but, uh, you know, improvement. Yeah, and, and I'm, I have no worries at all about uh, how this Tiger team is going to perform. They're going to play uh, every down like it's their last down. They always give a good effort, I can tell you that right now. One thing you don't have to worry about is the effort. There's another handoff to the back in the backfield for the Jackets, and he is swarmed by a host of Malakoff Tigers in the backfield, and a one-yard loss on the play. 
And uh, that's what you want to see your defense do right there, guys. Swarm the football. Whenever that football gets to that running back, you want to be on top of that football, put 11 hats on it. And the Tigers did a very good job of coverage right there in uh, making that tackle. Actually, they're going to bring it back five yards, so they're going to say five-yard loss. No, excuse me, they're going to reset it reset, right there and go yeah. first down. <clears throat> yeah, I'm getting confused here in the scrimmage too. So, Well, this defense had a chance to rest up a little bit, uh, you know, here toward, toward uh, I would say we're getting close toward the end of the scrimmage. Yeah. And uh, it shows uh, that, that little bit of rest has, has really uh, – really Sean here uh, defensively for him. Tigers now looking to stop the run and they do. What a hit put on the quarterback and that was just a defensive front right there crashing through the blocks of the Minnesota lineman. Excuse me, not Minnesota, <laughs> Mineola. I, I've already, jumped, close, I've already jumped to the, the pro football <laughs> level here. That's right. Uh, anyway, second down and <laughs> nine yards to go. Looks like for Mineola, and again, Tigers doing uh, doing very well here on the defensive side of things. Well, shouldn't we? We uh, since we're on the pro level, shouldn't we bring up the uh, Cowboys and Dak and Zeke and or just leave it alone? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, 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 that's a sore subject for me right now, but you know, I, I do understand what they're doing. But you know, they have a salary cap too, and you know, I, I just don't agree with all this holding out. I, I mean, I understand you got to get paid, and, and that's all fine and dandy, but if you're a football player, you know, get out there and play football first and worry about your contract later. Uh, you know, if he plays well, the co the Cowboys will reward him, I'm sure. And, you know, I'm not sure Dak Prescott deserves over $30 billion myself. Uh, he hasn't just – he hasn't proved himself that, that much to me. He's got some good numbers, of course, but to me it's more than about numbers. Um, and this year will be a pivotal year for him. Uh, and, and it'll be for a pivotal year for Coach Jason Garrett, too, because, you know, listen, uh, Jerry Jones is probably uh, – Jason Garrett's probably on his last leg with Jerry Jones right now, and and uh, I'm looking – if the Cowboys uh, don't have a great year this year, we could be looking at another Dallas Cowboy football coach and quarterback uh, in Dallas. That's true. Uh, well, I'll tell you what, <clears throat> you take out this contract – controversy thing that's going on you, you got those players back in in camp um, you got a strong uh, offensive line for the Cowboys the defense is looking uh, pretty stellar at this point you know with the young guys in their second third seasons oh a nice pass is overthrown right there excuse me uh, Stephen overthrown the receiver had the defender beat right there just a little bit of pressure applied by the Malakoff uh, front four there and uh, quarterback just couldn't put the ball on the dime right there as he could have without the pressure anyway yeah go ahead with your uh, analogy there or whatever you're trying to get out <laughs> but you know what it all boils down to if all you know if this contract controversy wasn't taking place you could almost uh, look at this cowboy team possibly going to the making another Super Bowl appearance yeah, I mean, I'm with you right there. I mean, I think they have the receiving core uh, to do it. Uh, I think their receiving core is just as good as anybody else's. Um, you know, their, their, their backup running backs are a concern to me right now that will be stepping up. I don't think Pollard is good enough to carry the load. He was a two uh, in, in his college days and not a, not a, not a workhorse or, or, you know, he, he didn't carry the ball just a whole lot. Um, and uh, you kind of need uh, a rugged, durable back back there. And I'm just not sure that Pollard's the guy to do it. And then you got Jackson as well. Uh, Jackson is more of a scat back. Uh, he's your third down back to me that would come out of the backfield, catch the pass, and, and could possibly break one for you. But, you know, uh, the backfield is, is, is yet not to be proven, uh, or not proven yet, I should say, uh, for the Cowboys. Uh, right. Tight end position. I'm, I'm feeling pretty comfortable with the tight end position. I'm I definitely like, feeling comfor uh, comfortable. I love Blake Jarwin. I love uh, what he did last year for the Cowboys. Uh, I love that Jason Witten's back to kind of mentor him a little bit more, uh, teach him how to run the proper routes that uh, you need to be successful <clears throat> in order to be successful in the NFL. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm pretty high on the, the tight end core and the receiving core. Uh, pretty, pretty, pretty high on the offensive or the Dallas Cowboys. I, I'm just not convinced. I mean, we'll see, and maybe they were holding back. 
<clears throat> I just I just can't buy into that right now. And 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 when you have so many, there's an interception by the Tigers right there, and I believe that's going to be Stearman, Dylan Stearman on the the pick right there for the Tigers. And uh, Stearman has a lot of speed uh, on his own, too. He gets the ball. He could be dangerous on open field for the Tigers. But a nice turnover right there for the Malakoff Tiger defense. And, and another still, reset for Minnie Ellen. <laughs> yeah, another reset for Minnie Ellen. But, but getting back to the Cowboys, yeah, I just, you know, I don't I don't know how this year's going to turn out. I wish I had a magic ball and or if I had a genie and a lamp, but and I could just rub it and I can ask him what's going on. But you never know. I mean, this is a different year, a different season. But I just don't buy – I just don't buy Jason Garrett as a coach, and I just don't buy what they're doing as, uh, as an offensive coordinator with Kellen Moore right now until he shows me something. I mean, to me, yeah. you still had receivers running running into each other. They they are, they were miscues on routes. And, uh, you know, you get down there to the goal line when they were playing San Francisco, you couldn't score. Same thing we saw last year. The ti- uh, Excuse me, not the Tigers. Tigers could score. Uh, <laughs> but the Cowboys get down into the red zone and they, fl- they flutter out and can't score. Uh, <clears throat> that's something that we saw last year with the Cowboys, and the same thing as I'm seeing right now. And the play calling looked the same to me. It didn't, didn't look like it changed a bit with the O.C., uh, more at the helm. So, you know, we'll see a little bit tomorrow night. They play the Rams tomorrow night. Uh, that game will be, I believe, at 9 o'clock on the, on the West Coast. So, um, 9 o'clock Central Time, I believe. But, uh, you know, we'll, we'll get another opportunity to look at things and, and see how they're progressing in practice. But I just don't think the Cowboys did a good enough job of getting those guys prepared last week. And, and listen, uh, outside the ones, the twos and threes did not impress me at all uh, for the Cowboys. They are very thin. Uh, you know, on the offensive side of the ball and defense, too. Now, I'm okay with the starting defense. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think they're going to have a great year. But, you know, if somebody gets hurt, you know, there may be some issues. Yeah, there's not not another uh, – what's the the guy, Van, uh, that stepped in and played linebacker? Vanders. Vanders. Yeah. Yeah, there's there's not another guy in in the depth chart that can step in and do what he did last year. No, definitely not. You know, you got Sean Lee still in the lurch, but he's, he's hurt again. Uh, so, I mean, you know, you, you might as well say Sean Lee is kin to Raggedy Ann because he just can't stay healthy. And, uh, you know, I, I, and I'm not a basher. I don't mean to be bashing, but I'm just making these observations. And I, I also think that with the Cowboys, they don't go out and, and get good talent. I just don't believe in what they're doing. I don't believe in their, their scouting department too much because what I've seen – uh, from the Cowboys and what I'm seeing from others like in Cleveland and Kansas City, man, those guys are going out and getting players. And, and the twos and the threes are just as and good as the ones. we haven't for a while. We yeah. haven't for a while. Yeah, there, that's a, there's a big problem there, and, and I, I think more than what's being led on uh, by the Dallas Cowboys organization. And, uh, you know, I, I think if you have a good quarterback, maybe spend the money to keep him. But I'm just not so sure you want to keep Dak Prescott with that kind of money at $40 million or, or, or more. Uh, to me, he's he's not a he's not a Tom Brady, and uh, you know Tom Brady over the years have taken no name receivers and made them uh, Hall of Fame receivers just about. But uh, that's him. He's a teacher. Uh, he's kind of like uh, Manning was Peyton Manning. Peyton Manning uh, was one of the the smartest, intelligent quarterbacks I've ever seen play the game. Uh, and I don't know if there'll ever be another Peyton Manning. But I tell you what, somebody I'm. I'm uh, I'm really high on his Patrick Mahomes Jr. Uh, I played baseball with his dad, Pat Mahomes Sr. I know what his dad did, and uh, his son is, is just following his footsteps except in football. And listen, Pat Mahomes Sr. probably could have played football too. He, he was that good. So He, he has but, uh, really impressed me. The uh, Kansas City Chiefs have gotten a great quarterback and a great young man out of Pat Mahomes. There's a long pass by the Tigers. Oh, caught. caught incomplete. Andreas Garrett all the way down to the 19-yard line for the Tigers. And what a throw by starting quarterback Darion Peace right there. My goodness gracious. And uh, that's what you're going to see a lot of this year, Peace to Garrett. Beautiful throw. Just laid it right into his receiver's hands. And that's that's what you want. That's what you want right there. And they're marking it at the 20-yard line. It'll be a 50-yard pickup on the play. And, and uh, that's how you want to start a drive right there, folks. So good job there by Peace and Andres Garrett to come down with the ball. This one right here is going to be a handoff, and Mineola is in the backfield on that little RPO right there, and nothing yeah, they, doing there. They kind of sniffed that one out pretty quick. <laughs> yeah. I, I tell you what I, I like on this this type of defense. It's aggressive, and they're, they're thinking that the running back is going to get the ball when you move left. 
you know, fake that RPO, roll your quarterback to the right, you know, and, and throw a little pass downfield, maybe in the flats or something. Uh, but definitely it's going to be open because all your, your defensive linemen right now are over-pursuing towards the running back. Empty set backfield right now, three wide receivers right, two to the left, and there's a little uh, movement on the front line. That's going to be defensive uh, offsides against the defense, and Garrett uh, would have scored a touchdown on that one. Yeah, that was a nice catch. And let's see, they may, they may call this uh, – Illegal procedure, but usually on a defensive encroachment call, they don't stop the play like that. It's usually a free play. So let, let's see yeah. what they're working on. Again, this is uh, preseason for the officials as well, but usually on a, a defensive uh, flag right there, uh, unless there's a player unabated to the quarterback, uh, they're going to allow that play to continue. So in that case right there, you just saw a, a touchdown pass from Peace to Garrett. Well, apparently they didn't mark anything off. Uh, well, it's second down and 15 now, so <clears throat> they didn't mark anything off. They're just going to no, play it again. They're just going to play it again. Typical scrimmage. Two backs in the backfield, two wide receivers left, one to the right, ball on the far side hash. There's the run. And uh, gain of four on the play, so it'll bring up third down and 11 coming up for Malakoff. And uh, Varsity is out there right now. R.J. Carr checking in the backfield for the Tigers now. So third down, 11 to go. Seen a lot of positive things for a first scrimmage. Uh, you know, going back to mistakes, I haven't saw a lot of mistakes in this game made by Malikoff, uh, especially the offensive line. Now, maybe some blown assignments on, on blocking, but as far as jumping off sides, illegal procedure, that type of stuff, we haven't saw that. No, uh, it looks like uh, the offense uh, haven't, uh, hasn't missed a beat since last season. Looks like uh, they've just started out where they left off. And I'm sure, uh, you know, they got that hunger, and that's what they're wanting to do. Peace rolled out to the left that time, fired a rocket for Nathan Jones on the far sideline that went incomplete in and out of his hands. Uh, ball a little bit low for Jones to, to hold on to there. So I believe we're going to have fourth down here. Yeah, they're going to they're gonna change the uh, down box to fourth down. So they're going to give the Tigers an opportunity to go for it right here. So I guess uh, this is our live part of the scrimmage then, Well, uh, so, uh, so to speak. <laughs> maybe so. Still, uh, they're working on some things, and the coaches talk to each other. Kind of let them know, hey, we'd like to work on this. Okay, that's fine. There's an agreement. Empty backfield set. Two wide receivers left, two to the right. Heavy pressure. Throws right, throws right, incomplete, in and out of the hands of an attended receiver at about the 16-yard line. And uh, that will be a change of possession right there if they choose to do that. Let's see what they're going to do right here. So we may see well. the – see if we see the defense, the offense for the Tigers. They've huddled up on the sidelines right now. While they've huddled up, we're going to give our sponsors uh, some more uh, acknowledgement here. Folks, you're listening to the Malakoff Tiger Sports Network on SHN Sports. We'll be right back. It's football season in Texas, and everyone loves a cold or dub beverage. Don't be the one that gets arrested for a DWI, or even worse, cause an accident due to irresponsible drinking. If you consume alcoholic beverages, be a responsible drinker and have a designated driver. It could save not only your life, but someone else's as well. It's simple. Drink and drive and go to jail. Don't drink and drive. This message has been brought to you by Athens and Turner Record Companies. Turner Records and Malakoff and Athens Record of Athens wish the Malakoff Tigers and Lady Tigers a successful sports year. Hey, it's that time of the year where you don't want those special moments to be forgotten about. Wesley Jones, owner of Thunderbridge Photography, can bring those magical moments to life and you can have a lifetime of memories frozen in time. Wesley specializes in detailed, artistic, and dramatic portraitures such as sports photography, singer portraits, and glamour shots. With Thunderbridge Photography, Wesley works with his clients to come up with a creative and original concept that translates into one-of-a-kind images. Wesley is currently booking singers for the 20 
2020 year, Wesley is just a phone call away and can be reached at 903-368-1668 or email Wesley at wesleyjpaint at gmail.com. Thunderbridge Photography can also be found on Facebook or the internet at www.thunderbridgephotography.com. Wesley Jones at Thunderbridge Photography is the official photographer for the Malakoff Tiger Sports Network. Go Tigers! All right, folks, welcome back. You're listening to the Malakoff Tiger Sports Network on the MSN Sports Channel. And uh, you're also watching it live as well. I'm joined today in the booth by Mr. Stephen Ferris and Mr. Aaron Scott. And uh, Jonathan Snowden is on the camera tonight for us. So we appreciate uh, the teamwork tonight that is taking the broadcast and produce this show. And there'll be many more in the future. Tonight's broadcast mainly is about trying to work the kinks out of our uh, systems, if we have any, and work the kinks out of ourselves, too, because this is our pregame as well right. uh, for us. But having a good time tonight. Uh, glad to be back in the saddle. Absolutely. Uh, nothing like a Texas football on a Friday night. High school uh, football. It's the only place to be on a Friday night in Texas, right? That's right. Looks like the, the Tigers made a completion, and the ball was fumbled, but – it looks like they're going to call maybe. I'm not sure what they did right here, but it's going to be second down and 10. Man in motion. There's a little quick hitch pass to the left side. A lot of running room down the left sideline. That's Andreas Garrett. Garrett goes out of bounds at the 33-yard line, and now there's a, a fight in progress, and it's mayhem now oh, on the sideline. And now there's... Spilling out all into the seats here, and, and no, we don't like that at all. And now there's punches being thrown by many Ola players, and this is not a good scene at all. Wow. Folks, are you ready for some football? Uh, well, it's a Friday night brawl. If not, then uh, you better read. <laughs> yeah, I tell you, that, uh, that took uh, quite a while. To get uh, tempers under control right there, and uh, there was a lot of mayhem going on right there, and and uh, everybody going back and forth with each other, and and uh, my lands. Well, I tell you, Marcus, uh, my friend, you're missing out tonight. Now the thing about it, we got a uh, many Ola fans on this side of the uh, football field too. Yeah, and. Uh, I'm not sure what's going to happen at this point. They, they may just uh, get on the bus and go home. So I'm not sure what uh, <laughs> what's going on here. One of the coaches uh, talking to one of the players or, or one of the coaches from Malakoff. And, and uh, well, that, that's kind of what you get when you haven't hit another team in a while. You get those uh, tempers flaring and, and uh, things kind of get out of control. But... You know, you have a lot of uh, – you have some uh, trainers down here and some smaller kids on the sideline too, and that's spilled off into the sidelines. And you don't like seeing that, you know. No, you don't. Somebody could get hurt, and uh, uh, we don't we don't want to see anybody get hurt. Uh, it was bad enough that it uh, forced the cheerleaders up into the stands over here. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I saw some cheerleaders, uh, I think, uh, hurdle the uh, the stands down there, the bars, to get up in the in the seats right there. Yeah, that's true. So it, it looks like they're going to call an end to this one here, and, uh, and probably uh, good reason why here. Both teams uh, going at each other. Uh, and this is uh, listen. These are these are two teams that has been to the state championship in the last four years together, or not together, but at different times. So there, there's a lot of uh, uh, <laughs> a lot of tempers flaring here tonight, a lot of pride on the line too. And and the Minneola says, hey, we're not going to let you just run it in our throat. And Malakoff says, hey, we're in Malakoff. You're not going to run it down our throats. And and uh, my lands, you you got a had an all out uh, skirmish out there, which you know we don't we don't ever want that. And you know, and uh, you got your your teammates trying to defend other teammates, but you know, at the end of the day, you know, you want to see that spark from your players. But again, you've you've got to contain yourself uh, and have the comp you got to have composure. Keep that composure, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because when you start when you start getting into game one of the season against Tig, you're seeing exactly what's going to happen right now against Tig because Tig and Malakoff. 
Well, they don't like each other. Not no. when they're playing anyway. Uh, you know, when they're not playing, everything's fine. But when they play each other on the football field, they don't like each other. And this situation is going to pop up again, I promise you, and probably in game one. So the Tigers have to preach composure uh, to the kiddos out there, and, and I'm sure they will. Coach Jamie Driscoll doesn't run a, uh, an unorganized team or an undisciplined team, but – uh, you know, you got to talk to the kiddos, get on their ear that we just can't have that. You know, it leads to player ejections. Uh, uh, you know, even even the UIL could get involved in it and say we got to ban this player. You know, so uh, it, there's all kinds of, of negativity that can comes from it, uh, and, and just kind of you know makes things kind of hard for for all of us too. And kind of watching in the stands and make sure that it doesn't spill off from the fans to because like you said, there's some uh, there's some Mineola fans uh, here in the uh, stadium on our side as well. Uh, but, well, a lot of, you know, listen, uh, Malakoff Mineola is not that far away. Uh, some guys work for the railroad, and, and they know each other, the right, State Department. Right, and absolutely. So they know each other. They know families and each other. And, you know, Texas is a big place, but it's not a big place because, you know, a lot of people are related to each other, let's face it. But uh, you, don't, you don't want to see that break out. You know, I feel bad for the new, new officials that are out there training and they get involved in that. Uh, that's kind of like, hey, welcome to varsity, my friend, because this is, <laughs> this is the way it could be and this is how you got to handle that situation. And uh, so it's a, a, a very good uh, learning opportunity for them as well. And let me see what, uh, what's happening here. Looks like they're all going to the sideline maybe to try to – finish out or maybe to try and play but uh at any rate uh that's gonna pretty much uh that's like a where's uh let's see looks like they're lining up yeah it looks like they're they're lining up right now but we've we've kind of lost audio and video video excuse me so we're trying to get that uh, situation fixed. Um, we should be back up here in about two minutes. Oh, okay. <clears throat> That's what they're doing. They're my <laughs> yeah. They're running. They're <laughs> running something called gassers. Yep. And uh, yep. that's usually. Uh, uh, <laughs> Usually a punishment for doing something wrong or being involved in an altercation of that nature. So uh, if you can't play nice, then you gotta you gotta run. <laughs> I remember those days. Well, folks, uh, we appreciate uh, you guys uh, joining us tonight for this telecast and broadcast uh, on our first uh, actual telecast and broadcast together on the Malakoff. Uh, Tiger Sports Network on the MSN Sports Channel. And uh, tell you what, we've enjoyed ourselves tonight. Uh, we saw some football. We saw a lot of action tonight. Uh, some that we didn't want to see, we saw. Right. Uh, right. But for the most part, uh, folks, I think your Malakoff Tigers are going to be just fine coming into the season. Um, I'm looking forward to that first game, and we'll, we'll have this game for you against TIG over in TIG in two weeks. I'll be on a Friday night, I believe August 30th. Uh, will be the first football game of the season. And, you know, Friday Night Lights is back right now, and I'm excited to be a part of this one and this journey again this year. So, um, you know, we will be there at the game in TIG for you, so you won't miss a game. Uh, we will have you covered. Um, <clears throat> I'd like to say that the Tigers also, after that, that game, let me get my, my schedule out of here, guys. If the Tigers uh, – all right, Russ, next week for a controlled scrimmage there, and I, I use the word controlled very lightly. <laughs> uh, Friday, August the 20th, excuse me, 30th, uh, Teague at Teague, and then the Tigers are at home for the first home opener at Tiger Stadium uh, against Emory Reigns. The next Friday night, September 13th, the Tigers travel to Mahaya to play the Black Cats, and the Black Cats are christening their new home turfed field they just got this year. Uh, so they'll be ready for the Tigers. And then September 20th, we're back here at Malakoff at Tiger Stadium uh, for the rematch of the state uh, 3A Division I state championship at AT&T Stadium. The Tigers will have Grandview this year at Tiger Stadium. And uh, 
Should be a great game. You don't want to miss that game. Come early and get your seats early is, is what I can tell you. Uh, then we go to Spring Hill in Longview, Texas, Friday, September 27th. Tigers travel to Longview. That next week, October the 4th, is an open date. The Tigers will get a chance to rest up, heal their wounds before headed into district play. Uh, thir Thursday night game this year on the 17th, it'll be A-plus Academy, and we'll be in Dallas uh, to watch the A-plus Academy game. That game will be televised uh, on Thursday night because UI rules allow us to do that. We will televise a Thursday night game. Can't do it on Friday night, but we will televise it Thursday night. And uh, we will be at the middle school home games, televising all home game middle school games and JV football games. Uh, after we get to uh, Dallas A-plus Academy, uh, we got Dallas Madison October the 25th, and that is going to be here. So we'll get to look at Dallas Madison uh, November the 1st. Tigers back at home again against the Eustace Bulldogs, and they'll end the campaign in district at Kemp, Texas, against the Kemp Yellow Jackets, a rematch of that district championship game last season in which Kemp won 22-20. to So we're excited to be a part of this this year. We're glad you can join us. We're glad to be a part of the SHN Sports family. Uh, Mr. Rob Hip and company, can't thank them enough. And uh, for everyone who's been a part of this broadcast, I'm Joey Snowden from Aaron Scott, Stephen Ferris, and Jonathan Snowden and Marcus Dow. Bidding you farewell and good night from Tiger Stadium. We'll see you for the home opener in Teague, Texas in two weeks.